Painkiller Already, episode 493 with our guest, John McAfee. Kyle? A couple of sponsors tonight, Humble Bundle, Blue Chew, and Smart Mouth. We'll get to them later on in the show, but yeah, very cool guest tonight. We've been, uh, we've been talking a little bit already. Uh, it's been interesting so far. I already challenged you to a duel. You accepted. Unfortunately, <laughs> Unironically, you to... three minutes ago, these guys were talking about like going to South America to shoot one another. Like, it's, it's, it's what you jumped into. So, yeah, very, very excited to have you on, John. You're a very interesting guy. Uh, you have the kind of life that when you Google it, I'm like, this, this can't be real. This has to be like punched up and made up. But no, it, it does seem to be. You've been arrested in 11 countries, probably working on a 12th. You've done a lot of crazy shit out there. I do not say that. I'm 74. <laughs> It's old. No, please. Have I not done my time? Have I not served you pricks, you young kids? Well, you're lazy motherfuckers, right? I'm in prison for you, right? So please, do not anticipate another goddamn jail term. Because you realize Damn that will be my last. You know this. You but understand yeah. this. People. Well, for 74, you look... I. I I would not peg you for 74. You look great, especially oh, as a God. very heavy drug user. I would think you'd look awful, but you look great. Well, well I would, except I, <laughs> well, once a week, I, Janice and I kidnap a, an infant and drink its blood. But <laughs> other than that, I, I think I'd still be okay. <laughs> yeah. Got a little touch of gray going on the sides. You look good. So, I've got more gray in my beard than you do. Do not. <laughs> She can give me gray on the sides. So I've been <laughs> waiting for that. Because why? That's the end. You know that when, when this goes gray, you're fucked, people. Uh, no, I'm, no I'm gray, gray here. Ready. No gray here. In fact, my hair is sort of. It looks lighter than it is. Well, admittedly, yeah, yeah. I've got some gray hairs right here. You know, I want to have them laser removed or something. But yeah. But other than this, the lower sideburns. Got no goddamn gray hairs. Oh, looks somebody. fantastic. Looks good. So. I was, I was reading on your Twitter, and I'm sure you're a little hyperbolic on there. You were talking about how you managed to look as good as you do while drinking two bottles of, what is it, tequila a day and three packs of unfiltered cigarettes a day. Is that a little bit of bloviating, a little bit of exaggeration? Because that doesn't seem possible for anyone, much less someone, no, you know, no, except a generic. Well, because you fuckers are in the 40s or early 50s at most, probably actually looking at all of you, nobody... In your face, you're all under 50. So now, <laughs> it's not just fuck finished. Jameson, empty. Let me show you. I believe you. Nothing. Nothing. Oh. <laughs> not a fucking drop. All right. So now, Janice, this is <laughs> this is my second bottle today. <laughs> <laughs> Janice, friend, and let's just so, say we're recording Janice. this at 2 p.m. <laughs> so what time is it for you, John? <laughs> I mean, it is where you are. But anyway, so <laughs> Janice went off to get, I said, baby, why don't we shift rum? So she's making me a mojito out of a quarter bottle, a quarter of a quart of rum. And she'll do two of those while we're on the show. You watch. Um, yes, I do that shit. Why not? Why right, not? John. Why do I do it? Because it. You, you may as well, right? Fun. It fucking pleases me. You guarantee that us that Bitcoin would hit five hundred thousand by November of this year. What? And if it I said a million, if it doesn't, I said a million, all right? if it doesn't, you, know. you said you would eat your dick. Will that video be on YouTube? Well, first of all, let's talk about the bet, people. I mean, I made this bet. When, do you understand the Bitcoin maximalists? I mean, whose I think average IQ is maybe six, um, uh, who are without any understanding of the blockchain other than the one understanding that Bitcoin <laughs> was the first and therefore the best. <laughs> I, I, I regret that if that logic <laughs> actually worked, the, uh, the greatest in the world today would have one one millionth of the power of your smartphones and would take off take up five city blocks no the world doesn't work that way folks i wish it did so but john you might want to uh cancel that mojito <laughs> john in all seriousness about the crypto am i drunk 
<laughs> no, you're just li- you're li- you're I'd like to drive me across town, but only for the adventure. <laughs> Whoever said that? I mean, how simple is that? Really? I mean, how simple is it? Anyway, okay, I'll cancel. About the cryptocurrency, to- I'm curious, John. Do you actually yes. think that whoever, like whichever cryptocurrency emerges as the winner, do you think it will be based on which one has the best technology or just which one has enthusiasm around it? Of course, it has to be people, because what is the best technology? You know, the, 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 uh, the Ford Model T at one twentieth the price of any other one off automobile including Buicks and all this other shit that ran 10 times longer at one tenth the gas and one tenth the service that's technology people <laughs> so right. that bet a joke because when I made that bet I wanted to make it for a hundred thousand I've done made a hundred thousand late by dick and someone goes whoa whoa John some idiot's going to believe that. I go, well, all right, a million. Please. You know, Bitcoin's an ancient, archaic, <laughs> antique. It was the first, people. It opened a door to the most fertile field of potential technology ever to arrive on this fucking planet, people. And through that door that Bitcoin opened. And Bitcoin was based on what? Blockchain. Math. Oh, blockchain. Mathematics. So yeah, blockchain, math, same fucking thing, people. Based on mathematics. A most profound, one of the most powerful paradigms, branches, forks, whatever you want to call it, of math. Fucking love math. That makes Newton's discovery of the calculus makes Newton look like, like a fucking bitch, <laughs> like a retard like, bitch. It looks like a sandbox play in comparison, people. No, we, we we opened the door of all fucking doors. What's the difference between this door and all other technological oh, doors? This one's made of numbers. Every Man. other technological door has opened up into the bowels of a black program within some military organization, within some fucking government somewhere, or into the bowels of a private corporation like yeah. Apple, like Apple, Samsung, uh, IBM, uh, Microsoft. No. What difference does it make? If that technology came from Microsoft, who owns it? You? 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 No! Fucking Microsoft owns it. I'm telling you, Microsoft owns it. If it came from the balance, <laughs> even though it's Microsoft's shit, it's still owned by yeah. Microsoft. Well, it's in the balance. So. Now, <laughs> it, that's why I said shit, people, please. It's a small joke. I'm keeping up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, I, I follow. I'm keeping up. Nobody's <laughs> keeping up. You pricks. <laughs> I, I, I promise. I don't but... think you know what you're saying anymore. <laughs> no, I, I finish gotta... it. Yeah, go ahead. Let me ask a question. So now, what's the difference? The blockchain mm-hmm. and the world's first cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, appeared 11 years ago. Owned by whom? Microsoft. You. No, us. That was so, yeah. No, you open fucking source, people. Do you understand what that means? You own it. Take the source. Do what you fucking want with it. It's yours. It's mine. It's everybody's. Yeah. Please. It's like communism. See. Or no way, you ran for president as a libertarian. You probably don't like that. Would you put your balls between us? <laughs> <laughs> right, so, well, no, okay, we communally no. own it, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. If it were communism, it would be far worse. No, it's not either communism or socialism or anything. With a fucking name? Because this paradigm has never existed before, people. 
there is no name to what has been given to you. Now, as you get this, it means one of a million things like, oh, I'm a programmer. I can upgrade what I want with it. I'll add this, subtract that. Mm -hmm. or, or it's like, what the fuck is this? I don't give a shit. For those of you who are doing that, may I say, it's like someone coming to your door and knocking on it and leaving the goose that lays the golden egg on your fucking doorstep and walks up. And you come out and say, I ain't hungry for goose today. Do you understand? You have been given whatever you want it to be. I mean, if God himself or herself could come down Whoa. from... <laughs> no, you've lost me. <laughs> God is a I man. was all on board for the last 10 minutes of that. <laughs> Every step of the way, I was with you and understanding Every coherent word that you put out there, but when you suggested that the Almighty might be female, please, sir. Oh, okay. So God, God is back. a spirit. He doesn't have a dick or a pussy. He's just kind of out there. No, no, he's got a dick. I've seen paintings. He's got a dick. <laughs> he's got a dick when he's human. And it's Otherwise, circumcised. No. You guys have never taken heroin, have you? Because if you have taken fucking heroin within a minute, God comes down from heaven and plants a fucking Kiss. Wait, and he had a vagina? Man, heroin no, it was, sounds pretty God funny. Well, please, fuck me. You guys have never taken heroin? I haven't. No. Yeah, no, knows no God. People call me a bit of a square because of it. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're very square. No, okay, so, so something God. Something I wanted to ask about your, your drug use with this, like, like in, uh, apparently in, in 2010, you, you no. were like a... Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. There's <laughs> some out I want to know about God. We, we just skipped over one of the most fundamental precepts of our perceptions of reality. By all means, dig in. What's going on in the bowels of this? Well, God is trisexual. Number one. We all know that. I mean, those of us who've taken heroin certainly know that. I mean, What's the third but, sex? What? Did you say you trisexual? He did. He did. Sexual, of course. Oh, okay. Male, female, and she male. I mean, good God, people. What, have you never watched fucking porn? Yeah, you, I will try to. Okay, okay. Now, you now you're delving into my area of expertise. Go on. <laughs> Our time is limited because sin. I don't know if any of you have ever noticed my wife is uh, black. Yes. I don't know if you've ever married or even lived with a black woman. They are the best fucking mothers on the goddamn planet. <laughs> However, <laughs> every living, moving thing is one of two things. Mother, father, or children. And well, three things. Or a female. No, no, it's not. No, no, my, I'm, I'm a child to my wife, and therefore, when she comes in and goes, this, it means... You've got 10 seconds to ask your last question. But anyway, we're not there yet. Good. Good. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm very, very thankful to hear that. So, so something I was reading about, you know, lots of content about you out there. Is it true that up until about 2010, you were a, a sober guy, yoga, fitness kind of guy, and then you started experimenting with some, I was seeing some articles talking about bath salts and some drug called uh, alpha PHP that you were messing around with, keeping you working, functioning on a high level. Is there any truth to that, or is that just the the media pumping your tires? There's a lot of truth to that. Oh. But, 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 but of that, that's the issue. Okay. <laughs> Dates? Uh, fuck me, I don't know what the date is. 210, 208, 25, 215. Are we going with the year now, or? <laughs> I don't know. The end of May. <laughs> May <laughs> two, listen, it, Dude, wherever you got that information, if it did come from God, I want his fucking phone number. I've got complaints. His fucking complaints for God. But anyway, so now, um, yeah, so sometime between 2004 and 2012, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had been sober and clean for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Too fucking long, to mm -hmm. be honest with you people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Too fucking long. Because before I... 
I cleaned up, uh, showered off, and um, stopped ingesting anything other than raw fucking vegetables. Um, yeah, I, mean, I had taken more drugs than you three motherfuckers could carry, I'll tell you that. I don't doubt uh, it. Uh, say, I know it is a fucking fact. <laughs> Especially if you can't weed. For God. You, <laughs> it would take ten of you. Just to carry the weed. I'm wait, sorry. wait! I don't know. Who, I don't know if you know who you're talking to. <laughs> we have an Olympic um, level smoker on our team as well. <laughs> well we yeah, but he can do it. ten times as much heroin as you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he can. Yeah. yeah, you cannot, my friend. I will. What's, tap the, what's out. the most fun drug that you've done? What's the one that you're just you can't stop coming back? What, what does that mean, most fun drug? I mean, is it the most fun in terms of enhancing sexuality? Is no, it most no. Fun? The one oh, that... whoa, whoa. Let me finish. Let me finish. Is okay. it the most fun? Is it the most fun in terms of um, <clears throat> getting deep into that hellish introspection space where you finally see yourself? Is it the most fun in terms of being able to stay up for three God? Damned weeks. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You gotta fucking tell me, dude. I've got a question. Let me. Let me. Let me... Hear, wait, what's the most fun drug? I go. Okay, I'm with amateurs again. John, John, you are with amateurs. I'm with you. Let me ask this. Joe Rogan describes DMT as this like almost permanent upgrade to your character if you're in a video game. You, you just get a little smarter. You get a little uh, introspective and more creative. Is this like permanent improvement to you? Have you tried DMT? What drug would you oh, suggest for that effect? Fuck, I've, I've had enough DMT to put you guys in the hospital. All the <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's wrong. Okay. I, I, think, I think Joe is demonstrating a naivete about drugs that comes when you discover drugs uh, past the age of 25. Because really, if you don't discover them before 25, then it's too late. You're a follower. <laughs> if before 25, you're a leader. Do you understand? I'm just saying. I, so he's a follower. The younger, the better, I say. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> no. yes. Are you still I talking about drugs? Best <laughs> <laughs> yes. so. age for MD, I was 19. The best age for MDPV is... <sighs> At least 22, maybe 23, I'm just saying. <laughs> a, Can you explain the, what MDPE the, does, what, what that is? MDPV, v, methylene dioxy mm -hmm. pyrovalone. That's MDPV. Well, now I'm sure that you read in newspapers or saw on the TV six years ago where, you know, a nice, uh, polite gentleman in Miami just randomly grabbed a stranger and ate his face. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Zombie. Uh, yes. Now that's methylene dioxy That's what he was on. Now what was his problem? Hungry. Here is the fundamental problem with MDPV. Uh -huh. If you don't have a $5,000 scale, don't go anywhere near it. Because you've got to measure it to the five microgram level in order to stay safe because here's what happens Ooh. it's um <laughs> one milligram per 11.3 kilograms of body weight measured naked not wet on a fucking scale that you know is precise mm -hmm. okay now let's just say the end result is uh, five milligrams you take 4.9 milligrams, what's going to happen? Nothing. You're going to feel jack fucking shit like you've been ripped off. Huh. You take five, you take 5.1 milligrams, what's going to happen? You're going to eat somebody's fucking face. No, that's MDPV. So <laughs> I have taken kilograms <laughs> of MDPV over the years. It's number one, the most powerful drug ever invented. If you get the dosage right, I've come close on either end a bunch of times. I've had more trips that did nothing <laughs> and a few trips that almost made me think, you know what? 
reasonable people would eat other people's faces off. I mean, that's almost <laughs> as close as I got. <laughs> so does that make you feel really energized and you're staying up fucking for days? Or is it making you feel enlightened, introspective? How's this drug making you feel when you're doing it at the, just the right dose? Oh, all of the above. All of it. Oh, okay. One, MDPV is the only drug I've ever experienced that provides <laughs> tactile hallucinations. <laughs> I mean, I became a master of getting my dosage right, and I was in Colorado <laughs> one time, and I went to the bank after snorting my exact. Uh, fucking dosage to the goddamn microgram. Why well, I had a five thousand dollar scale? I ain't mm. fucking this drug up. So now I'm standing in line, and I just know there's some bitch sucking my dick. I Ooh. feel it <laughs> <laughs> around, around my thighs, okay, near my butt, pulling me into her, and she's sucking like mad. And I know I'm going to come any second. I'm looking down. My dick is like nine feet long, but there ain't nobody there. Nobody is there. And um, I no, need a better scale. <laughs> I'm sorry? I need a better scale. No, I'm going to no, get was started. Dosage. It was the perfect dosage, I'm telling you. No, not just that. Auditory hallucinations you can't fucking believe. First thing is, <laughs> everybody, if you get the dosage right on the first trip, who is it that talks to you? You. Whose voice is it? Yours. Oh. Who's in, whose inflection? Yours. Whose knowledge? Because the voice is telling you shit that you've forgotten. And you're, you're about to enter a nightclub, and your own voice is telling you shit that you forgot during some drug binge in Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> what was the most enlightening thing that yourself told you while you were on this drug that you maybe had forgotten about from a different drug binge? Anything that really opened your mind's eye a little bit, changed the way you think, maybe permanently? Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you're going to understand it. I don't know if anybody could understand it. In yeah. St. Louis, Missouri, in St. Louis, Missouri, in the most intense trip I have ever experienced, I sat down with God, who was crying, and said, uh, my loneliness is intolerable. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it was God, it was me, it was the word, it was the truth. It horrified me, terrified me, shook me to the fucking core. Mm -hmm. Because I saw the truth. It, of course, if there is a God, what more lonely entity could possibly fucking be perceived? Or conceived people. <laughs> it's true. Makes sense. Nothing but drugs can bring you to that that place, that chair where you sit and hear that most horrifying of all truths. That if there is a God, that God is the loneliest entity ever possibly conceivable. Uh, so that was it. You asked me. Interesting. Just, you know, I thought that, we were going to be talking great. about antivirus, but um, <laughs> <laughs> this is much more entertaining. No, you got to, you got to ask. You got to ask. And something else I want to know is you, you've got, you're, you're very open on your Twitter account. You know, with with your your drug habits and with some some sexual things as well. Do you think that it was some of these drugs you took that kind of maybe opened your eyes to how pleasurable a glass bottom boat is? Or being, uh, I know you, you know, you, you trend toward a couple scatological things. Is that something that you were interested in prior to the drugs? Or is that just a joke you tell sometimes? I don't know. I really don't. I, I'm not sure what specific details you're discussing. Do you like getting shit no. on? No, absolutely not. I mean, number one, I don't like the smell. If you guys tried it, uh, it's difficult. I was just checking. Um, I thought you were you were a weirdo for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
believe me, I'm I'm far more weird than that. Do you think that? <laughs> John weird? Yeah. Well, then Hi. you do not want to hear anything about my life. I'm telling you the truth. Let me yep. let me tell you a goddamn story that's true. Hit us with it. From 1985. So. I was with a friend and a gentleman who worked for me at a company called Omex, the first optical memory system in Santa Clara, California, the heart uh, of Silicon Valley. At the birth of the computer age, mm -hmm. and he's a kinky motherfucker, right? I'm bored. And he says, why don't you come with me to um, uh, an event? Put on by Gemini. I go, Gemini, what's Gemini? Well, I mean, he says it's it's a society, nothing important. Men dominant, uh, women mm -hmm. submissive. Oh fuck yes, let's go. We went. Uh, fascinating. <laughs> Two weeks later, he said, um, "Come with me to an event at the Catacombs in San Francisco. Please, God, look this up." The most <laughs> wild sex club ever in the history of humanity, including the goddamn Romans, by the way. And they were bored, motherfuckers, and rich. So, no, better than that, stranger than that. Anyway, in the catacombs, Janus. I go, what's Janus? He said, well, I mean, it's reverse. It's women dominant. Men submissive, and I go, fuck yes, let's go. I enjoyed uh, the Gemini shows that I can't begin to describe. Anyway, so now, fuck me, one goddamn drop. Janice is not back with the booze. If it doesn't happen soon, it's over, folks. I, I have to <laughs> drink. We have so the now, other Jameson. <laughs> but I got more Janice. Oh, fuck, God. Janice. This mofo is, is empty. Anyway, so now we go. I'd never been to the fucking catacombs. God damn it. At the top floor of one of the oldest buildings in San Francisco. Stone fucking arches. 20 feet tall. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a goddamn catacomb. That's why it's called that, I, I, I suspect. Yes, so. Anyway, so on entering, I, I see some interesting things. One, there's a gay couple, male gays, okay? The guy is... Is spread eagle on a cross, tied. Uh, electrodes are attached to his nipples and his testicles, and his partner is in the, is in the hallway where everybody's walking, going, "Would you like to try?" And so, you could crank it from zero up to ten. <laughs> 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 At ten, he passed out, but no one ever did that. And so you cranked it, and he go, ah! <laughs> ah, 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 "Thank you." Thank you. Right, okay, that's what that's what happened when I twisted the thing. But in any case, so shit like this. Um, let me tell you what the main show was. You may also Google this to verify the truth of what I'm telling you, people. There was a dominatrix across the bay in Oakland uh, named Mistress Cat K A T, not C A T. Look it up. One of the greatest dominatrixes of all time. And so she came out on stage. This is my ah, fuck me, I don't know, early, one o'clock in the morning. So we're all in the auditorium. I got a front row seat. I'm with Stefan, my employee and good friend and truly sick motherfucker, um, on the front row. And so on the stage comes out Mistress Cat and a naked slave, a male. Right, he's got his uh, his dick and his testicles tied up in a nice beautiful red bow, kind of like a Christmas present. Right, makes sense. Okay, so that's it. So now, so now they they bring out <laughs> a a hook on a chain and lower it. We notice now that his hands are bound. He puts his hands <laughs> over his head like this, bound mm -hmm. the hook and put it between. They haul him up two feet off the floor. Not much. He's happy, no pain, no nothing. Mr. Cat comes out and puts on a leather fucking glove. Black, black. Yes. And on yes. the finger, all of the fingers and the thumb and the palm, you can see, looks like there are tacks inside it sticking out. 
<laughs> half an inch, right? They're clearly, some clearly the close attacks, some that you don't want to fucking touch, that's for sure. And so just one one hand, the other's place is just plain, ungloved. She walks over to her slave and reaches between his legs, takes his balls, cups them gently in her hand, at which point he moans. She strokes him lovingly with her hand across the face, down his chest, his side, his back, and squeezes until blood <laughs> on the blood onto the floor. Now, what does a slave do? Now, he, he, believe it or not, orgasms. I mean, there's a jism shooting across the fucking <laughs> stage. And this mofo, what does he do? He takes his hands, lifts himself like this so that she doesn't have to reach so low and she can still squirt blood from his ball. So now, that that was the, <laughs> the, the PSA de resistance uh, of that evening. So now, wow. um, I can't remember what the, what the question was, but if you'd like to <laughs> ask, uh, you will now have a better understanding of my own fucking experience. Yeah. I lost the plot, too. <laughs> <laughs> it started with Twitter scat talk. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed his cat. I'll never remember that. Wow, beautiful. Listen, at that time in 1985, fucking gorgeous. Oh, I mean, you might go, yeah, she can squeeze my balls for Jax, too, provided we have at least 10 minutes together afterwards. Uh, so I don't know. You guys are quiet. I mean, have oh. I stepped up? No, 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 no. You're, no. You're 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 right on par with where we usually go. It's 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 just a little more interesting than. <laughs> oh, are you than used to go this fucking far? Please don't fuck with me. You no. do not go no, this we do. far. No, we, we, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I I've seen some pretty similar shows. Uh, I was at a club uh, called The Box in New York, and there was a a, a pretty ridiculous dominator show. There wasn't as much blood. We Ridiculous, uh, titillating, terrifying, but ridiculous. No, I'm sorry. That didn't come to anybody's mind in that event. So it's one of a bunch of things like, oh, my fucking God, I'm scared. That's one. <laughs> and number two is, ooh, I've never tried that. Let's give that a try. Where do I number get one of those gloves? Number three is men unzipping their pants and masturbating in the goddamn uh, chairs uh, and so on. But no, no, ridiculous didn't come to anybody's mind, I'm sure of you. I can just say. Fair enough. Jesus Christ. So, so... I want to hear about some of your time in Belize. It, it seemed like you got into a bit of trouble down there with the, the government of Belize and, and you had to end up leaving the country under ridiculous circumstances and I understand they ended up auctioning off a lot of your property and and then I read that your 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 home there even was burned down under what they call suspicious circumstances. What's the <laughs> truth that people don't know behind that? Oh, it's too fucking long. I mean, they said, you know, I, got in, I didn't get in much trouble. I mean, they tried to kill me. They had the army, the uh, police after me. I, they were shooting at me in the jungle. I mean, I was in hiding for two months, escaped into Guatemala. I got arrested three days later in Guatemala, and police demanded that I be returned so they could torture and kill me. And but just a beautiful thing, third world company countries, folks. The uh, the attorney general for Guatemala, a gentleman named Telesforo Guerra, the attorney general. I hired him for a hundred thousand dollars and said. <laughs> I just want to go back to America. Can you make that happen? He goes, yeah. And that was it. So no, um, I went back to America. Why did the simple authorities in Belize think, deal. why did the authorities in Belize think you killed somebody? Uh, okay. So now you need to go back a year to okay. when, okay. First of all, I was in San Pedro, the American enclave on the tourist island of San Pedro, one of the most beautiful fucking places on this planet, by the way, if it weren't for the fact that people were there. In any case, um, I got bored. 
after three years, I said, I'm, I'm going into the jungle, the interior of Belize. I went into um, Orange Walk District, the largest district of Belize, uh, 18,000 people, all of them black, bought a huge piece of property, built a serious fucking compound for millions of dollars, staffed it with very dangerous people, all of them heavily armed, um, and basically called attention to myself, which is one of the stupidest things I've ever done. I, I, mm -hmm. You get stupid as you get older. In any case, I've been there for a year and a half, and the local political authority in the largest district in police came to me and said, Mr. McPhee, our election's coming up in five months. If you would donate $2 million uh, to our party, here's what we would do. Uh, we would give you a million acres along the river well, that could eventually be worth billions, but I probably wouldn't live that long. Um, tax breaks, uh, all the pussy you could ever goddamn imagine. <laughs> uh, I, I idiotically said no. Now, what idiot says no when the person coming is representing the goddamn government and they have 17,000 soldiers with AR 15s, tanks, and fucking helicopters? No, who does that? Well, I do. I'm stupid. I said, no, <laughs> I should have said two million. Let me give you four or 10. No, I said, no. Well, one week later, 47 armed soldiers from the gang suppression unit, which reported directly to the prime minister. It's the equivalent of the Navy SEALs in America stormed my property, arrested me, shot my dog in front of my eyes, saying, Mr. McAfee, if you do not think we're serious, boom, the dog's head exploded in front of me. My goodness. It sucks. That's sad. I just said, um, I see you're serious. What is your name, my friend? Anyway, so now, um, uh, whew, it's been a terrible day. I was tortured. Uh, they destroyed my my lab. I was doing um, antibiotic research. It cost me half a million dollars in damages, and then just left. My goodness. <laughs> well, what Thank kind of torture were they putting you through? I'd rather than that. Well, anyway, so the next day, the next day, the, the same gentleman who asked for the two million came back and said, Oh, Mr. McPhee, good. We are so sorry. We made a mistake. We had bad information. Please forgive us. <laughs> and Mr. McPhee, by the way, have you <laughs> reconsidered your donation? Well, I was pissed off by then because they shot my dog. I don't give a shit about the destruction of property. They killed my dog. Mm. I had seven. Mm -hmm. Yes, it says, but they killed my favorite dog. Guerrero. Anyway, um, so, uh, Mr. McFree, we're terribly sorry. We made a mistake. However, Mr. McFree, uh, have you reconsidered your donation? I've said well, I'm very simply, very politely, by the way. <laughs> up here, I will shoot you in the head right now. That was another mistake. I should have said, I have indeed, uh, now that you've shown me the truth, uh, the light of uh, the proper way. You're a bit of a slow true. learner here. <laughs> I am. It's, you know why? It's my fucking emotions. No, no, I'm, and I meant it. I, I had a 357 Magnum in a shoulder, also, which I pulled. I didn't point it at him. I had it in my hand, pointing to the ground. I said, get off my property, never return us. I will kill you. Do you understand me? Because I knew what they had done. They killed my fucking dog. I mean, forget the torture. Forget the half million dollars. Forget everything. No, they killed my goddamn dog. No, I had, they, I'm sorry. They don't pass muster here. Get off my property, else I will kill you. Well, that started <laughs> a war with the Belizean government, which lasted for seven 
months up until the time that they couldn't collect me legally. Why fuck me? I had the I had the most serious security. Listen, if the Belgian army had tried to collect me illegally, a hundred of them would have died, and of course we would have all died as too. But no, we're not gonna do that shit. Because I moved back to San Pedro, the American fucking enclave. 94% of all Belizean income comes from Americans and the tourists. Mm. They don't fuck with you, San Pedro. However, they were so goddamn clever. One night, the government poisoned nine of my 16 remaining dogs. And the next night, killed my next door neighbor after planting rumors that he had killed my dogs. I knew better. He was a, um, hang on a second, Janice? <laughs> <laughs> hang on. Janice! Hey, Taylor, maybe take a second to fix your camera again. Okay. I don't know why it's doing this, sorry. No, it's, what can you do? We don't... <laughs> For for any viewers, uh, John wanted to use Skype, so th this is new to us. Well, old to us, but whatever. I'm talking to you. Oh, I thought you were finished. No, no, I haven't finished. Probably they already left by now. It's been very boring so far. Hello, everyone. Sorry about the interruption. I don't know if they heard that. Probably not. All right, so now. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about the interruption, everyone. No problem. <laughs> it's all You're good, fine, Janice. Janice. I don't know who this woman is. I just, uh, <laughs> we'll figure it out later. So anyway, um, so yeah, so the I knew it was not my neighbor who poisoned my dogs. God damn it, he had dogs. You tell me, people, what dog owner? He's going to kill somebody else's dogs. Mm -hmm. Poison them? I, mean, I, I woke up at two in the morning and they were lying in the sand on the beach, vomiting their intestines out of their mouth, or shitting their intestines out of grass. I had to kill them all. Wow. Uh, you, think that, you think that was not a. Um, a difficult task, then you've never had a dog before. Can you imagine nine that you loved, you raised from puppies five years earlier, you fed them, you cared for them when they bit into a porcupine, you helped pull out the fucking spines. Mm -hmm. You cradled them when they were sick. You loved them. And they're out there in the sand vomiting their intestines. I don't know, so I shot them all. I knew it was not my fucking neighbor. He loved dogs, people. <laughs> they forgot this. I'm going, I know. No, no. The well, next night, my that same the next night that neighbor was murdered. Shot in the back of the head, gangster style. If I wanted to do harm to anyone, I would hope that I had the common fucking sense to wait six months mm -hmm. or a year before taking it. What idiot? What idiot? And you can't say, well, you know, uh, the, um, what do they call that? The uh, anger of the moment. No one's fucking, it was 24 hours later, plenty of time to think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It was the Belizean government. Mm. 18 hours later, they came for me. I knew they were coming. I knew they were coming. I hid in an attic in my, my estate on San Pedro, which are designed specifically for such emergencies. <laughs> and mm. This has been my life for 55 years. So, of course, I have an escape plan. So I yeah. hid in the attic. 22 hours laying motionless. I pissed my pants because I was afraid to move. 
to make a noise. Police were searching right below me for me. Um, special room, impossible to detect. Mm. After 20 some hours, I came down. The police were gone. Scurried across the sand, hid under another one of my buildings in the sand, which had under a huge piece of plywood had a little small shallow grave dug in the sand which I put myself in with the plywood. Mm-hmm. The police actually came by two hours later looking again with flashlights and so on. They left at about 4 a.m. At which case I left walked a hundred yards up the beach to a neighbor who was a seasonal resident of San Pedro and had given me the keys to their house so that my caretaker could maintain the taker and hid in their back garage with a lock that I had the key to. Mm-hmm. And called some men on Nagas. One of the seven women I was living with at that time. And I called her because I knew that she had set this whole thing up, which she had, which she admitted to later. And I said, are you going to help me now, Sam? She was crying. I said, yes. So I said, then you call this taxi driver, which I had arranged a year before and paid the man a fortune just in case he gets a call with this code word. She flew over from Orange Walk to San Pedro and Went from the airport to the taxi. The taxi came up. This is the craziest thing ever. Came up that dirt back road, 14 miles from San Pedro town to where I lived. I jumped in the taxi. I hid on the back floor. Sam had a flowing, Samantha had a flowing dress. Covered me with it. Three minutes later, as we're heading south on that road, the police two vans, maybe 25 officers, were heading up to my place to continue mm-hmm. their search. They stopped us. But Samantha, I did what Samantha always does, a very sexy, uh, alluring, lusty <laughs> lady. Ah. Did she convince them not to Open. pursue with a little sexual favor? <laughs> No, it didn't have to do anything. She merely, as she saw them coming, she opened her blouse so that her nipples were not quite peeking out. Everything else was. And so no one, and this van stopped us. The police are here. I'm looking up to the left of Sam's left leg. I can see the goddamn police officer looking. And I'm looking down. He's looking at Sam. Uh, they have a brief conversation and we move on. And it's a long story. You don't want to hear this shit plus we're over time. Maybe another day. All right? Jeez. So you're running <laughs> for sorry. president against Trump and Biden. How would I'm you not, describe I was. I'm you... not I'm not I was. I was running under the libertarian banner. They chose mm-hmm. a woman. That's mm-hmm. fine. Uh to be the nominee. Now, in 2016, I came in third. I didn't even place this time. I'm a transity people. So, anyway, oh. I've got to run. Janice just gave me this sign, which means you guys mean nothing now, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to Janice, we are nothing. Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, you too. Give Janice our best. <laughs> Will do. Thank you for coming on. Really, we all right. Thank God. <laughs> thank God. All right, we're gonna switch over to uh, Discord yeah. now because Skype is fucking atrocious, and only idiots use Skype. Idiots and crazy people. <laughs> crazy. And we're back. PKA four ninety three. So that was a thing. That was a thing. Um, so we all. Is anybody we else have a, stressed out? Yeah, so oh, stressed, dude. I lost <laughs> like, my appetite happening? even before the show. <laughs> Before the show started, I was like, I'm hitting, like, Taylor, please do your research on this guy. Like, I, I last night on my live stream, I'm like, am I, I, I was worried I'd be able to interview him well. I knew he'd be tough. I, I knew he'd be hard. I think we did all right. Getting him to tell his side of the Belize murder story was as great as you could do. You're um, welcome. <laughs> I don't think we did a good because, job. Because there is no interviewing any... him. There's yeah, no interviewing. Yeah. He is like, 
a bowler made of horse shit that you have to get rolling down a hill. <laughs> Once it's rolling, you don't try to get between the horse shit and gravity. You just let it flow. You just let it flow. That guy has damaged his brain so severely. If you look, so we all do our research when we have these guests. I, I think it was clear last week when when each of us had had lots of background on our on our mm -hmm. on our guest, and uh, and we knew the right questions to ask to get the best responses. I, I felt like we all did a very good job last last week. This week, I think we were we were equally prepared. I I, I the only thing that I I wanted to ask that I didn't was the fact that his he met his wife. And she was a prostitute who propositioned him. I wrote that he, down too. Yeah. I didn't want, she seems so sweet. I didn't want to be like, so she's a whore, huh? I, had, like, I didn't want to do that. If I had hours with him, I did. It, I wanted to, he said that he hasn't paid taxes since 2010 and he's the FBI's yeah. number one target. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to interrupt the murder story to talk about taxes. This is a <laughs> good opportunity to shut the fuck up. Let's take it. And uh, we, we were maybe 40 seconds into the pre show when I joined, when I'm like, oh, this list of topics and questions for him is absolutely useless. There is yeah. no way that he's going to like Kyle saying, you know, we did our research on this guy. We did, but I don't think any of our questions had any bearing whatsoever. on what he's <laughs> no, I, had three, I had three topics written down favorite drugs, which you hit anyway. Uh, the murder in South America, which Kyle hit. And uh, I guess he knew Jeffrey Epstein. But that wasn't on his Wikipedia page. It was from my Ooh. Twitch chat. So it wasn't a top priority for me because, mm -hmm. you know, the Twitch chat tells me the 76ers are injured every night. It, it, doesn't, mean, <laughs> it doesn't mean a lot. Yeah. I yeah. I, Rogan dies all the time. Yeah. Joe Rogan's died. Yeah. <laughs> I had a lot of topics and questions, but like he was I, like, like in the pre show, you know, why, uh, Taylor was like literally two minutes late. Not late to the show, but, but like late to like when McCaffrey right, got Skype. here. The call yeah. was two minutes old. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. the call was two minutes old. He wasn't late, but McAfee was actually early. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what happened. And in that period of time, McAfee had challenged me to a duel. And he was like, I, I was like, well, I, I I, think I actually challenged him to the duel. He brought up a duel, and I was like, well, I, I, yeah. For some duel. reason, he thought I was the smartest one on the call. I'm pretty sure it's because I need glasses. That's <laughs> I, you, you know, he was going, he was like, well, I'm going to have a leather slip band holster and a clock 17. And I, and you have to use a button down snap like back. cowboy snap holster. cap holster <laughs> with a 1911. And I'm just like, well, what? That's not how duels work. We use the same weapon. That's, <laughs> but, like, like yeah. you get to pick the weapon type. I'll tell not you what. Each of our setups. He yeah. challenged <laughs> us collectively to both a weed smoking competition and a duel. I don't think John did his research. He doesn't know who he's fucking with, Kyle. I could beat John in the weed smoking contest <laughs> and then kill him in the duel right after. <laughs> Yeah, the duel is really where he missed the mark. Like, you, know, you probably should know you're tremendous with a gun. You know? And and he seems, uh, he actually, you know, he's the kind of guy who might be pretty fucking good with a gun and you don't know. Oh, I know he's very good with a gun. Uh, if you look at his, like, history, every time he's arrested, it's like DUI and possession of a firearm <laughs> while intoxicated. <laughs> it's like, it's, there's always a gun involved with each of his charges. It, it, it's like international water with high caliber weapons. So, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> yeah, he was he was clearly he's clearly brain damaged, honestly. Like from he said he was in South America making all natural antibiotics. I think we know what his laboratory was really <laughs> cranking out in in Belize, right? Like like that I something else, yeah. I, oh, and I I read his Wikipedia. And I'm not sure everyone will take from it the same thing that I did at the pre-McAfee stuff. This guy wasn't just a computer programmer. He was like God's gift to computer programming. His resume, like a top guy at Xerox when Xerox was the, the king of computing at the time. Then he moved to NASA and Lockheed Martin. And he got a copy of a virus and decided to invent antivirus. Uh, McAfee antivirus was not a bullshit thing you wish didn't come with your computer back in the whatever 70s or 80s it was it was the only antivirus around yeah yeah it's his, very his, impressive yeah his, his 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 list of accomplishments are he invented one of the very first im programs like 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 oh pow power pow power something yeah, pow -wow. like that 
Powwow. That's what I thought this interview was going to be like. So like, wow, powwow. How did you come mm. up with the idea for instant messaging over over the computer? I mean, today it's I mean, we're on a, we're on one of the leading programs that that do that today. Skype. How right? long did you think that's that's maybe not what the interview is going to be? Forty five like. seconds <laughs> yes. after he joined the fucking phone call, and I realized he wasn't just doing a bit. Like right. like I I thought at first that he was being goofy and silly with us. Like like then he kept he said like three times he's like you should have been recording this, and then he went on one of the like you guys got to hear like th- forty five minutes of him mm-hmm. ranting. He ranted from the moment he joined the call, and we told him we weren't recording. Uh, so yeah. be in the before the show starts, right? I look at every cam- Red Wings cameras. I try to make our heads roughly the same size. I try to get everything right. John oh, McAfee oh, oh. doing all this <laughs> shit, right? He's moving around. He's, he's got the McAfee dance cooking, and I'm like, well, <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> we're we're going to get what you get on this. We're going wide on McAfee. Go wide on McAfee. <laughs> you couldn't. His head was cut off a lot. But his head was cut off on the feet. There's nothing I can do about that. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. He, See, he, <laughs> like, it was maybe, you're right. I, I didn't know because we were on Skype, and Skype's changed that I had to click into the call. I was still waiting for it, and I get a text from Kyle a few minutes before we're slated to start, and it just says, hurry up, get in here. He's on a weird manic rant. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I hop in there, and yeah, he's, I, I didn't know if he was 100% sure we weren't recording yet. He, but he then was us, like sure he did later. We yeah. we made sh- he we made sure he knew and we explained it and then he insulted us a few times. Yes, yeah. So before the show, there's usually we talk for a few minutes, maybe set him up for success, and uh, we don't record that. We've never recorded that. If someone's like, yeah. it's pretty rare if someone says something that they wouldn't want to get out, but we it's it never happens. And uh, he's like, you know, well, you're missing out because this is gold, you know. And, and I was like, yeah, but but we don't do that, you know. Yeah, we're we're not ready. And he's like, what are we waiting on? I'm like, the the third guy. <laughs> Fuck him. Let's go. <laughs> That's about how. And I'm like, no, no. He's he, he's he's pretty good. We we want him here. <laughs> you know, like like <laughs> he's no, on the way. Three thirds of the show, generally, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. He, you know what? I like him. Yes. That, that was an interesting guy, but I it, didn't like, you, like him. No. It was halfway into his stories. I liked I'm him like, as a oh, guest. I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, oh. I mean I like him as a guest, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, I like don't like him as a human being. I w- I couldn't stand to be well, in a room with good. him because I'll tell you what he well he reminds me of. If you've ever been around someone who's really drunk and you're really sober and you just wish they'd shut the fuck up, you're like tired of their silly billy nonsense like mm-hmm. like he was like that. And maybe that was because he was actually drunk because he actually has finished off a bottle of Jameson today. Or maybe that's all a big act. All I saw was a big empty bottle of Jameson. I we've sat here drinking. and put away, like we've sat here and put bottles away and we weren't that goofy. I made fun of a crippled man, <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't rock back and forth and talk about God being a trisexual. Who was Riley. the man? Oh, he's not, yeah, okay. Yeah, had a little full. <laughs> uh, it felt like his, his mouth. I like Riley. Speed that he <laughs> I like Riley too. I apologize. I, that's the only thing I've ever apologized for, for saying on the show, and I've said some horrific things. The only thing I've ever apologized for, and will ever apologize, for, <laughs> fuckers. I was um, making fun of that man after he injured his spine because I yeah. was just so drunk. I'm glad he's so okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad he can walk. Yeah. Um. I was liking how many different times he'd be like, and you know, God, God comes down, he's sitting there, and it comes down to three, it comes down to two things. A, God is a woman. B, God is a man. Three, God could be a, ch- and it's like, wait, what? You just said there's two possible options, and now we're into A, B, C, D, and that reminds me of Belize, and they shot my dog, <laughs> and I had, and, like, it's, uh, it, it was so. You need a five thousand dollar scale to understand the shit I'm talking. <laughs> then you low. Dude, that drug sounds like a punishment. The way he described it. Yeah. Tactile it, and auditory hallucinations at the bank. You're not selling. <laughs> I was. Uh, I know. I was buying. I was buying what he was selling. I'm like, wait a minute. So tactile. You can feel your dick getting sucked, and his dick's nine feet long, and it's getting sucked. 
and and he's ready to go. And I'm <laughs> he described that as if he was calmly, stoically standing there at the counter at Bank of America. I guarantee he was a fucking loon. <laughs> you were doing yeah, something and you could sl- as the poor clerk, the teller is trying to figure out if he wants to deposit. He was tr- he was he was just a stream of insane consciousness. So <laughs> I couldn't even slip jokes in when he was telling that joke about getting his dick sucked. I want to be like, and that's why he's not allowed at Bank of America anymore. But no, you can't. Because he's just going to keep flowing right into the next nonsense. Yeah. Ever, like, I you, had some material around off. God as a she-male, and I, I, I was like, oh, it's, it's, sometimes you seize the opportunity to be quiet. It, it was that old <laughs> Skype thing where it's like, you know, he, he tramples over you three different times in a row, and then you decide, like, I'm getting this question out. <laughs> and you get, like, 22 words into it, and he's still talking, and you're like, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> it's not, he has no interest in listening, let alone answering what question I'm trying to pose to him. Right now. Uh, I, oh, and, and you know and what's Kyle's- really interesting? <laughs> he had nothing to promote. <laughs> <laughs> Why was he here? <laughs> yeah, so, so... Uh, oh, Kyle distracted me. Uh, oh, oh, Kyle said he was uh, a manic and a crazy person ranting to me. I also think he's a crazy genius. Yeah. And then if I had more time, we could have gotten some nuggets of genius to fall through, you know, to, to come out. This guy was an actual genius, right? He really was an actual that. genius person. Someone as, as smart as I could ever dream of being. And, and, and then since then, you know, he's discovered drugs and, you know, hit his mid seventies and stuff like that. But I, I still feel like there's nuggets of interesting stuff in there. I, I, ideas that are unique and he came up with on his own. He genuinely does look tremendous for a 74 year old man who he, is, he really does. Yeah, he looks good. He looks 50 tw- something mm-hmm. and he's at 74, man. And I really do have more gray in my beard than he does. Like he did, has like, two things here and that's it. I like that he doesn't seem to really, or what? What do he, he called us bitches for not experimenting with heroin? <laughs> yes, that is the level of alpha. I don't think any of us were prepared. <laughs> <for that. laughs> you guys no. haven't tried heroin? It's like shit. I've never felt bad about it before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, where, where was he? Oh, uh, we, he, it's not true. Do we know? Wikipedia say. says he's in America. His Wikipedia says he's in America, and then he went... In Lexington, uh, Tennessee, I think. But I think he's hiding on a yacht or something, and he didn't want to say where he was. If it isn't America, we should let people know we started recording at 2 p.m. Central Time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just so you know, like, like this is the earliest we've ever... We, we, uh, we moved the show uh, the, the, both weeks in a row. Last week, it was like an hour or two early because our guest obviously was in the U.K., but I have no idea where this man is, but it required a 3, pay, 3 p.m. Eastern start time. And Skype. I like to imagine that he's on the East Coast. He just, he just, he just wanted to do it then. Yeah, and that was the whole thing. Probably is. He's like, no, I don't want to do it then. Something to promote? No, I'm worth you know fifty million dollars or whatever. Fuck. Oh, he's not. He, he used to be worth a hundred million. million, but uh, now it's more like three, four. Yeah, it, it, his Wikipedia page said it went. He lost ninety six million of his hundred million value, net worth. Uh, but Wikipedia, you don't. Know, right? Yeah, like, yeah. During that economic downturn and. Uh, but I don't know how it's gone since then or whatever. I, it would surprise me to learn. He had nothing to promote. Yeah, I was going to say, it would surprise me to learn that that guy's pulling up Optic Hex comes on here and he's got a whole bunch of businesses booming to promote. <laughs> yeah. John McAfee comes on and he's, he just rants about titties and drugs. And then he's like, well, time to go. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay, I, I thought for sure that you'd written s- some sort of new program, or there was a nootropics business, or uh, or maybe some. He's sort not of running vitamin any businesses company. right now. That's no. what I was trying to get out. He, he's he's not getting anything going. We can't. This. I thought he was kind of joking a little bit very early in the show, where he's like, oh, "I'm two bottles of Jameson in, but fucking Janice better bring me my quarter fifth of gin and tonic or whatever it was, my mojito." mojito. And it was like. Yeah. Maybe 15 minutes later, he's like, where the fuck is Janice with the mojito? <laughs> like he was no. actually upset, not getting his mojito. Yeah, no, he, he told her to go get one, I think just before you got on the pre-show call. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I knew that was real. I was well, like, what's Janice wrong? You getting the shakes? Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. So that's a thing. So that's a thing, yeah. You know, like, I hope I hope people enjoyed that. I was very uncomfortable throughout the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And just sort of, I, I just, I felt like I was on some sort of a roller coaster ride that like like I can't get off I thought I was going to like this ride but now it's just really bumpy and I'm getting a little nauseous 
Answer we'll me this. Ride it out. Have you ever felt more like, what do I do on this show? No. Than that? Because I've, I usually feel like I'm pretty, I, I put a lot of time in researching guests, coming up with questions, and I tried to do that as much as I could. But like, he, he is a riddle wrapped in an enigma, that guy. I, yeah. There is no way to know what's going to send him on a 15 minute rant about very little. Taylor, I was so stressed headed into this. For for two days now, I've been worried about how to do a good job interviewing John McAfee. I I had George Foreman chicken, rice, and mixed vegetables. And I gave it back to Jackie. I'm like, what is this? No, no, I don't want this. I eat this twice a day for years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my appetite over this interview. Uh, I, didn't yeah, know, I wasn't like that. Anything, I, but I just felt like I, I, I was I wanted to be prepared for it. I wanted to like know more about the guy. And uh, and I really thought that we were going to be interviewing some sort of business magnate who's got a kooky hmm. side. That's what I was thinking, too. I was thinking that it'd be like, oh, man, he's going to talk about silly fetish stuff. And then he's going to drop some knowledge about how blockchain works. And he's this hyper genius. Mm. But, yeah, it was a lot more the the hyper genius part was man. hard to get into that, that. Yeah, that diamond is encrusted in dirt. Yeah. So I, I hope people enjoyed that, um, you know. We've been trying to get him forever. He's canceled like last minute three times or something like that. I'm sure because the, he ran out of mojitos or something, or, <laughs> or the or the Belizean government was hot on his tail, or, or or his dog was getting assassinated. God knows what. Did you know the, the assassination thing made a little bit of sense to me? Like I don't know. Hey, per, you, all right, perhaps I'm gullible. I'm just like, oh, this is all fitting together. Quite honestly. I was thinking, why does the the government of Belize need to frame you if they want to get you? Can't they just get you? Yeah, that was, I mean, I, that was a good question to ask. Not that it would have mattered. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. His answer would have been like, you don't understand the ins and outs of the Belizean government, do you? <laughs> and I'd be like, no, fucking, do you? <laughs> Clearly not. Uh, Mr. Bank, they... positive Belize had a government. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I, 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 the only thing he wouldn't answer is when Taylor asked him about how they tortured him in Belize, and he just went, "I don't want to talk about that." <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just pictured him like in Rambo: First Blood two, chained to that fucking uh, mattress spring box springs, going ah, being electrocuted by a I, fucking officer. I had a joke about Miss Cat, the dominatrix, working for the Belizean government that I couldn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> It's a rough. lot of jokes didn't get through. No, <laughs> no there's not a lot of it's shared like, oh, airtime. Well, no, guess well, time's passed now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was very interesting. Uh, I I was not worried leading up to it at all. I was thinking exactly what Kyle was. It was like, oh, it's going to be another interview on PKA. He's a goofy guy who's also very smart. He'll, you know. I thought way more of it was a bit, and it maybe that what he was doing is partially a bit. Maybe, but. And we're falling for it. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. Yeah, he may have gotten on that call and went, Woohoo, can you believe that? I bet they think I'm crazy. <laughs> All right. It's, it's like there was an old SNL skit about Reagan where, and this uh -huh. is when Reagan was president. And, you know, everybody thought Reagan was a real dumb dumb. And, and the skit starts off, and the guy playing Reagan is like, Well, hello, little girl. Uh, yes, I'll sign this for you. And uh, I hope you enjoy it coming, coming to the Oval Office. Now, you, you have a nice day now. And, and, that some advisor comes in and asks him a question and he's like, Oh, I just don't know. Um, have, have Ted take care of this one. I just don't know anymore about those sort of things. And he walks out of the room and he goes, all right, everyone back to work. And then like the door, the wall swings open and 30 advisors come in at once with like flow charts and they're, and he's giving notes and commands to like eight different departments of government and like control, like, like handling war fronts in the, in the middle East and oil prices. And, and, and they're like, Sir, please slow down. I, I've got one speed. And he's he just like, <laughs> I imagine he's like that. He got off the, he got off the phone call and he was just like, I bet they think I'm a real goofball. Janice, get a load of these tards. They bought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, that, that was, that was weird. That was fucking weird. <laughs> anyway. That was fucking weird. <laughs> Jesus. What do you want to go to uh, next? A lot, a lot of stuff is, uh, is going on. That I'm, I'm, I'm fixated on that. I, 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 <laughs> That hurt me a little on the inside. I, I, I'm not going to sleep well tonight. Those were all withdrawals. Oh, <laughs> yes. God damn. Most of bank account running empty. 
Maybe. <laughs> uh, Fuck. <laughs> anyway, so there's, should... there's riots in Minnesota are pretty crazy. Oh, I don't know if you yeah. saw like that. Dude, can I just about... target to survive? <laughs> so here, let me let me kick off with that. I watched the video of the cop kneeling on the guy's neck. And uh, I went into it with a pro cop bias, right? That, that, I guess that's how I was leaning. I didn't know I was, but as I'm watching it, I'm like, well, it was probably an accident. And, and when I studied Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I or trained or whatever, I heard st everyone daydreams about using it a little bit. It's kind of an asshole daydream, but it is what it is. And, and I'd read stories of not, do, not to do it. Like one guy put a guillotine on someone. It was an argument at a drive through right? Somehow two cars got oh, angry at each other. Yeah, for sure. And uh, the, the people got out of their cars. They got into some sort of fight. One guillotines the other. But because he was so drunk, the victim that is, he died. He died to a move that wouldn't normally kill you. So I had that in my head. You know, this cop didn't mean to kill anyone. Maybe the, the victim had a pre-existing medical condition of some sort. I read that he died in the hospital later on, which reinforced that. Now I think that's bullshit. And um, then I watched yeah, I the video. Oh, you haven't watched the video? Okay. Yeah. So the video starts with the cop putting his neck on... Is this the carotid artery? artery? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so the guy's like on his back in handcuffs. And the cop has his knee on his uh, artery here, cutting off the blood flow to his brain. And uh, uh, the guy's on the ground saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, please stop. There are a couple onlookers saying, stop, stop doing this, stop doing this. Why don't you just put him in the car? You know, if you need to restrain him, you put him in the back of a police car. That so thing's real quick, what did, what did the cop say that he did? Forgery. 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 Now, it's not on camera, but it appears there was some resisting arrest because the cop said, we tried to put him in the back of the car for 10 minutes. That didn't work. So me and my pro cop bias were like, oh, so this guy resisted arrest. That's why they're giving him the business. And, you know, it was like a accident. And, and but you're watching it and it, he just keeps doing it and keeps doing it. And the choke keeps going and going. And you're like six minutes into it. And it, at one point, the guy passes out, right? The guy's dying because we cut off the blood flow to his brain. Mm -hmm. And the onlookers with the cameras and stuff are like, he's out. Stop. Now, like, I, I, I finished a couple of chokes to where people passed out. I've been on the other side, too. If you stop, it turns out okay. If you keep cutting off that blood flow, the guy can die. How long in the video was his knee on the guy's neck? Something like six or seven minutes. Yeah, it seems way too fucking long. The fuck, right? The cop can't, and I, it's, this, this is just me projecting on him. Or, he seemed to like it. He seemed to be happy that he was alphaing this dude. And the cop wasn't very alpha. I beat this cop in an arm wrestling competition. I'm sure of it. You know, he wasn't like, some jacked alpha cop. He was older and thinner and just, but he got the guy in cuffs. He probably allowed himself to be in cuffs and he's got his knee on his neck and he seemed to be just posing, choking. And you know, the only way you can choke a guy with a knee on neck is if the other person lets you, the other person stopped resisting arrest to the extent that the cop killed him. And, uh, and I was, I got to the point where the onlookers are like, Hey, He's out. He's unconscious. Take your knee off his neck. And he didn't. He kept the blood choke going until the guy died. And then they took his lifeless body and put it on, uh, is it called a gurney? You know, the little bed yeah. with wheels that goes yeah. in the back of an ambulance. And they, they put him on the gurney and you, he wasn't coming to. And then they put the gurney and the ambulance and they take it off where they say he died in the hospital sometime later. He very well could have been dead when they threw him on the gurney. That's what they always say. Yeah. They always say that. Yeah. I know an EMT or two, and, you know, EMTs don't declare somebody dead. They keep working yeah. on, the, on the patient until they get to the hospital where a doctor declares them dead. So I think that's the situation here. That guy died yeah. on the street to the choke, and mm -hmm. then they reported it as if he died later in the hospital but maybe dumb question this was in minneapolis and that's why we're getting minneapolis yes. riots? yeah it was in minneapolis uh Twin cities where... the the victim was a black guy and the cop was a white guy which always you know just makes it that much more inflammatory and uh 
Um, so in Minneapolis, I guess they're rioting in a pretty intense way. AutoZone on fire, maybe? Target on fire? Do I have I this right? a bunch of places on fire. And looted. Lots of like, places on fire. It looks like right now a Verizon store is getting looted and a vitamin shop and a noodles and company. I don't know what you could possibly garner from rioting and looting a noodles. Chiz store. has a couple videos here. Do you want to... I haven't pre-watched them. Do you want? But I'm I'm sure they're sure. Fine. I'm not. I feel like I'm not kept up on this story. Uh, what are they like? Straight off. I think this is looters tweet videos. Oh, oh, okay. No, these look. I was afraid it was going to be like. It's harder than it was in the past to share wait, like, wait, a few seconds of hockey game or CNN or whatever. These are yeah. Just this is like some cell phone footage off Twitter. We we can't watch that top one. It says that someone's being stabbed. Well, let me let me watch them. Yeah, pre-watch a little. It's hard for me to do with. Uh, accidentally sharing and stuff but oh, um, oh no oh no wait she's trying to get the show taken off the air <laughs> uh. i can't okay i i well, have no idea what can you happening. describe what you see is it two protesters so stabbing it's, it's each other lady, I, I haven't seen anything that we can't I... show yet it's outrageous though yeah. It's an old lady, a very overweight <laughs> lady, like a rascal, and the caption on the video is she's stabbing people. I haven't seen that yet, but I did see someone run up to her and blow a fire extinguisher right in her Okay, we're mug. good. We, we can watch this. Okay, uh, yeah. It doesn't, nobody's actually getting stabbed what, here. What, um, what do I click on? It's that the top, top one. one. It's uh, got a, a okay. gentleman Zero with red pants one. on. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm lining it up. I think what this is um, is a lady in a motorized wheelchair uh, parked in like the uh, in the doorway of some sort of a, a retail store, and oh. maybe she's literally stabbing looters. I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> Thirty-three second video. Ready, set, play. <laughs> Move. <laughs> <laughs> the <game of> the <laughs> oh, that's red. Oh, oh what that guy just wing at? <laughs> oh, America. <laughs> All right, now the second video, the second video is apparently the aftermath of the first video. Okay. It's pretty hard to figure out what's going on. Even this then. is going to be great. Chiz, yeah, it, sorry, I literally... falsely accused you of bad videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's 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 standing. She's parked in the in the doorways of this retail store, stabbing looters with some sort of with a knife, and in her motorized wheelchair. Yes, that's the important part. Of, like, what can we watch this? The second video, right? Yeah. Ready? Yep. Set. Yeah, I'm ready. Play. <laughs> They're getting peacefully her good. Target did this to you. You were peacefully protesting. I was peacefully protesting. Now they're all throwing things at her. Are you okay? They attacked me. back. Look at her. Look how dirty your wheelchair is. <laughs> she popped into the door. She can't see. <laughs> Look I got at her face. with fire extinguisher stuff. I've already seen the EMTs and they want me to go home. Was that but it? Somebody just had milk huh. and that's supposed to help with face. And it's then just, just go home, lady. I... So, so the story is she was stabbing people near I... the exit of Target. Was who were she looting? though? What... Yeah. So I... I have no idea. What I'm getting from this, hopefully I'm right, is that she had decided to end the looting at Target, yes. protect the building and the and their merchandise by herself. This woman in yeah. a motorized wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robo Robocop, as she calls herself. <laughs> and then the looters yelled she was stabbing, which wasn't clear on the video. I don't know if she was or wasn't. But the yeah, looters. Sure. And then yeah, once the crowd heard that she was stabbing, they spread with the fire extinguisher hilariously, and I guess winged some other things at her and threw things and hit her. Yeah, you could you could hear things hitting the wall behind her for sure. See, everybody thinks that fire extinguishers are a silly thing to shoot somebody with because in the movies you always either see two kinds of fire extinguishers: 
the super fake one that like shoots whipped cream. That's just yeah. like some cartoon nonsense. And the other one that almost never exists, which is the CO2 fire extinguisher that like freezes stuff. And mm. it's like, you like end up a little frosty. That is a chemical fire extinguisher. That shit is nasty. That, that it, I, I've been, we, I we went into them. this factory. Yeah. yeah. My cousin and I broke into a factory when we were like 12 and we started spraying these fire extinguishers in the air that were in the factory. And we nearly choked to death because the air was full of that chemical. It's mm -hmm. really awful to be around. Hmm. Mine wasn't bad. It was it, it shot a dust. It looked like that one. I used it in my kitchen when there was a fire. Mm. Then my wife accused me of like drama. There, she was frying something with grease. Then there was a grease fire that had left the pan and spread to the rest of the oven. I fairly quickly got the fire extinguisher and put it out. And she's like, you just wanted to use it. It was an appropriate time to use the fire. Where's yeah? Thanks for saving the house. Like I would have liked that response, not. But okay. Wow. It was out of the pan. <laughs> it was, it was out of the pan. <laughs> it's been weighing on you for a while. Like <laughs> if it, look, if it's in the pan, you put a lid on it. If it's extended to like the rest of the stove and possibly the counter, like that thing, and it's yeah, I don't know, three or four feet tall. It's fire extinguisher time. Be one thing if she had already gotten like a pound of salt and she was getting ready to like put this out, but she was probably standing there like, "Oh no!" Yeah, I I was pretty quick act. The fire extinguisher was right outside the kitchen door, so it was sure. like twelve feet away. I just got it and put it out. It was a good call. I would do it again. <laughs> I want to find more riot footage. <laughs> yeah, so I that cop. Have you seen the footage of the cop killing that dude, Kyle? I've seen images of his of him kneeling on the guy's neck. You that's, have to that's watch it seen. play out over six or seven minutes. I, like I said, I started thinking that, you know, like like okay, that guy had like a heart condition and a problem. The one that said I can't breathe in New York, and I think that if the cop had treated me the same way, I'd have survived it. But yeah. that guy, uh, you know, was already unhealthy, and you got to be more careful. Okay. I came into it thinking that with this guy, he just held a kind of choke on him. A kind of choke you can only do to an unresisting person. Like, you know, in the UFC, you never see them like put this on someone's neck against the cage because that yeah. choke is so easy to break. You know, you just break it apart. Like they're not controlling your body. You've got everything, every leg, arm, head to defend yourself. If I put two hands on your neck like that, that's a choke that I only succeed in if you allow me to. Mm -hmm. This was or if a it's a woman. <laughs> yes. Trust me, they can't break that show. <laughs> the, the They'll scratch the fuck out of you, though. <laughs> uh, the cop had a choke that was as easy to break as rolling over in bed. You know, just roll over sideways, the knee slides off your neck. It's not a problem. That guy wasn't resisting in the slightest, which is my central point. It, it, <clears throat> he didn't resist all the way until he died. And yeah, when you were describing it, I was getting kind of short of breath. I, I don't think I want to see that. <laughs> yeah. Like the idea of that set, like, like makes me a bit claustrophobic. Yeah. And then, yeah, like mm. I said earlier, you know, like you can finish a choke to where the guy passes out. You let go, the blood rushes back, everything's cool. I've, that, to hold a choke until the dude dies, to where they let go and he just stays dead, like... It Are you was guys a murder. By it, the fact that like YouTube is absolute trash now. Like trying to find real footage of Minneapolis riots or protests, whatever the right keywords are, all you fucking get on the front pages are CNN, ABC, Today, Fox, The Hill. Ro that's that's Reuters. the way that's it's the way YouTube like, wants it. I, I know it's the way they want it, but it's fucking bullshit. Last Why night, these I was on YouTube videos? watching a simulcast live stream of to Memphis, LA, and Minneapolis. Like, so it was good last night. Yeah, the, the live stuff is always good. Like, by, uh, back with the Ferguson riots, there was a lot of good live stuff on YouTube. Mm. Uh, here's here's a little clip that I just found. This one's uh, titled, uh, There's a Dude with a Fucking Chainsaw in Minneapolis. Oh, I heard about him on my Twitch chat. You know, this guy sounds pretty cool. I have... <laughs> Uh, my Twitch chat theorized he was using a chainsaw so that he'd get new ammo. Oh, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> that's how Doom works. That's how Doom works. <laughs> All right, ready, set, ready. play. 
I'm following this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Right. He's just walking right. for a bit. Did Short he hurt the anyone with the chainsaw, or was that no. a "don't mess with me" chainsaw? That's a "don't mess with me" chainsaw. That's how the cameraman Actually, made it are, seem. I think all chainsaws are "don't mess with me" chainsaws if you want them to be, though. Yeah, that guy's chainsaw gives my chainsaw size envy. Like I've never seen a "come hither" chainsaw. <laughs> I like a fourteen-inch blade on it. Is that what it's called? The blade. One of those little, I don't know. One of those little ones that's yeah, like I, that. I feel like those are more dangerous. It's, yeah, that's how you can make figure eights to the face. <laughs> you could be a lot more violent with one of those than one of those, like... You'd have a harder footers. time, like, you know, flanking me when I have a lighter, more maneuverable chainsaw. Yeah. Hmm. yeah I'd like to see a chainsaw, chainsaw like fight. Only 12 or 14 inches, like, pretty basic <sighs> bitch chainsaw. What are you going to do with that? Right? Well, I'm going to use it to chunk up the tree that fell on my fucking fence. Yeah, I still haven't that. done. And the St. Yeah, Louis riots that are sure to come. I literally had a friend in my group chat of like a bunch of my high school buddies being like, can't believe this isn't happening in St. Louis yet. <laughs> it's like, are you retarded? It's coming. <laughs> Every time we lead the charge with the riots, you know, and, and the nonsense. And so like people, people standing in front of the, or no, there were a bunch of clips of that in Atlanta. I think, I don't remember what event it was, but when people were standing in front of the like, a whole freeway blocking it off. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they were locking the freeways down everywhere around Ferguson. No, around Ferguson, happened. yeah, but I know that uh, I know they did that in Atlanta a couple of years after that. So yeah, a few of them got ran the fuck over too. Yeah, you shouldn't block the road. That's very. That's not good. That's where the cars are. <laughs> yeah, that's where the cars are. And if you if you get too close to some you know person in a car, they might just fucking floor it. You know, you, I you love those clips. You know, I love the clips. I love the clips when the people stand in front of a fucking F-250 with smokestacks like <laughs> that guy has ever made a reasonable decision in his life <laughs> and challenge him to make the first one ever. <laughs> he won't run me over. <laughs> and he says, nay, sir. <laughs> I'm driving $65,000 worth of bullshit here that I, I used to drive back and forth to work. You don't think I'll run you down? Yeah. He'll be, you know, serpentining to make sure he hits you. Scott's about to buy another one of those fucking monstrosities. My cousin does like, like one's not enough. <laughs> he, gonna, he bought gonna... one and then sold it when like, uh, like, like his job fluctuated, and oh. and, and he's so he like he bought like a gigantic uh, diesel. I don't know what it is, six point seven or six point eight liter, like big turbo diesel Ford mm -hmm. two fifty, right. and got rid of it. For new listeners, and, Scott is Kyle's cousin and good friend. And I, he's talking about, he's, he's like, you know, they got point zero point nine financing on these things now. And uh, my dad's like, you, you, you could drive a Honda back and forth to work. You're not a rancher. And, and, and my uncle's like, well, that interest rate's not going to get any lower now, is it? And I'm just like, I don't want to lose money on this. I don't wanna, exactly. I don't want to lose money on this. Uh, well, then, retard. Tell me if I have this right. Don't welders get paid extra money for bringing a truck on the job site? Am I right? If he would work the way... Uh, so what he should be doing is going out west to where they're putting in pipelines mm -hmm. and getting those types of jobs where you get like per diem and hotel. And even and your, like you said, your truck is part of the... It, it gets its own paycheck. Mm -hmm. And in his type of situation, if you're going to get one of those trucks, you get a fucking trailer that goes behind it, like a, like a little motorhome type deal. Mm -hmm. And you go to the fucking welding school that's 30 minutes from his house and you get a couple of amateurs and be like, hey... You come with me, you work for me uh, and subcontract for me under this pipeline contract. I take 10% of your pay. You've got a place to stay. Plus, I'll help you with any, 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 anything else you need. And I'm getting you the job. And he'd be making $280,000 a year or something. Instead, instead, he works at like a nuclear power plant, which is still very good money. Mm -hmm. But you can drive a Honda Civic to the nuclear power plant. Yeah. There's no reason to... Well, I guess if you've already told him all those things, there's no changing his mind. He's going to buy he, it. He gets homesick. He gets homesick. He gets homesick. You should have seen us when we'd be across country, like, getting pussy and fucking... Literally fucking whores and blowing up buses and, like, <laughs> out in the desert. Like, I'm like, this is just like the outlaw Josie Wales, Scott. We're in the desert. Look at that. That's a tumbleweed. Come on, let's go blow up a mountain tomorrow. I really want to get home to my girlfriend. I'm just like, what the fuck for? 
fuck that hot the Mexican chick over there that's on. staring at you. I had a friend in high school like that. Uh, literally, you take him two or, te- two or three towns over, and he had like a, a pull, like a thirst to get back into his hometown. And really? at home, he was real territorial, right? Like our high school was the Red Rebels or something <coughs> like that. And uh, Red Raiders. Anyway, yeah, he's got the high school bumper sticker on it, and he's got it. Like, he's, like, he's proud of red, and he likes being home, and he feels like if you know, someone from some other high school is in our town, then, you know, we should bump their shoulder yeah, or something. On the high school per town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just like, like, he was just a territorial dude like that, and he didn't like being out of his own home. Says, I was an honor student at Red Raider Elementary. <laughs> Still, <laughs> he's 45. <laughs> well, 73. Yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ, he's wearing his Letterman jacket still. <laughs> I, I, I never understood that homesick nonsense. It's like we're grown ass men. Like like we're having an awesome time. We're going out every night and having just a ball. And there's like hot hot girls everywhere just hanging out with us. And then during the day, we're like playing with helicopters and mini guns and shit. And your job is to hold a camera and you're making a huge amount of money. Like yeah, what the fuck. It's ridiculous. I uh, kind of want to go back to that tiny tiny town I'm from and see my girlfriend. What? Lame. I'd be fine if we never saw that town again, ever. (laughs) So I got that, I got that thing taken off my eye last week, and Mm -hmm. uh, and and what do you ask me? Like like you know, is it it wasn't cancer or anything, was it? And I was like, no, no, no. The uh, the doctor assured me that because there were eyelashes growing through it, that's a that's a sign it's not cancer. Well, they call me uh, Friday, and they go, so it's cancer. They call me Friday, and uh, and she's yeah, like, um, <laughs> she's like, uh, the doctor would like to talk to you about your test results, and I'm like, um, okay, well, you know, tell me, and and she's like, well, he wants you to come in, and I'm like, that's not a good sign. Um, well, I can't come in. My dad just had come in that day, so like, like he's he literally has walked in the door like as I'm on the phone, and I'm, I'm like, I, I can't come in today, and and it's Memorial Day weekend, so like mm-hmm. it's gonna be Tuesday which is Tuesday, a couple days ago, before I can get in there and actually see this guy. I'm like, it'll be Tuesday before I can get, there, get in there to see him. Just tell me. And uh, she's like, hang on, I'm going to get him. And I'm like, oh, this is bad. And the doctor comes on. He's like, ah, so um, I was wrong. Um, the test results came back. It's, it's cancer. You, you have cancer. And I'm like, ah. Well, that sucks. He's like, yeah, we're gonna have to. He's like, he's like Lumberg on uh, on Office Space. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need to go back uh, into your eye on Saturday and uh, remove a little more skin on Sunday and get clean margins for Monday so that you don't die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, that'd be great. Can you go? So. I no, go ahead. What's the question? I, I didn't understand the timeline. They're going in on Saturday to get. Ah, no, that's a that's an office space uh, reference because oh oh, oh oh I'm sorry. To come in that's, on on Saturday and Sunday. Sharp work as the a marble, sharp as a marble. Right. right. Yeah, <laughs> it, it'd be different if you hadn't seen that movie many times and referenced it. In any case, <laughs> <laughs> in any case, um, got a little little bit of the cancer. Um, they don't think it's spread anywhere else, but we're gonna do some scans or blood tests or what have you and find out for sure yeah, put and, test uh, and uh my doctor is a, a plastic surgeon that's his like primary uh thing he does and uh so he's going to take like a very small wedge from like the bottom of my top eyelid and then bring it all together and, he, and, and uh he assured me there'd be like no scarring or anything he's like i deal with people who have car accidents and it literally like rips their whole eyelid apart and i piece those things back together like puzzle pieces with very minimal scarring so i'm I'm good with that. You're going to look uh, great. And if you have a little bit of an eye scar, you're going to look hardcore. Oh, I want if they do that, I'm going to ask him for a call Drogo. I'm going to just get it to run all the way through. Omar. So I, or an Omar. Exactly. I don't want an Omar. No, the Omar is... Man, no, not up. Omar. would you get an Omar? If the call I'm, Drogo is intense, the Omar is even more intense. <laughs> the, the Omar is, is, is not the kind of look I'm going for. <laughs> Speaking, okay, first of all, real side thing. I want you to introduce yourself to every guest we have from here on out as a cancer survivor. <laughs> oh, I am. oh, I'm I'm putting that one right here. That, I can make cancer jokes forever now. I don't give a fuck. Mm. I'm really yeah. jealous of your ability. I got to my C card now. 
<laughs> and you don't even have to steal it. You, you don't even have to steal cancer valor. Just don't answer what kind of cancer you have. They're like, oh my God, what kind? You go, I don't want to talk about it. John McAfee style. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of torture was it? Uh, it was fluffy fingers. It's when they get you and just tickle you and won't stop. <laughs> and that oh, well, they, they killed my dog. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> right, thanks, thanks, Kyle. Yeah, that, they cut that's off some, all my hair. Comments. <laughs> Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, we were talking about wire stuff. This character oh, wait, Ziggy. Wait, oh, we can't okay, leave the cancer thing that quick. We're, we're talking about Kyle's cancer. Right. I, 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 enough cancer talk. Let me talk about this HBO show from 2005. You're not going to believe it. All right? Who cares about your, your T cells? Omar Little. That's what it's about. And it's 2002. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you keep updating us. What, what do we got? Uh, you know, I, I'll go back and just. I, I haven't called him yet. I should mm -hmm. have uh, to arrange the next surgery. I'll probably call tomorrow or whatever. I've had a lot, a lot of stuff going on, um, but I'm gonna call and schedule the next surgery and go get. This time I'll get fentanyl, uh, Woody's favorite drug. It'll. Uh, so I'll be really out of it, so I won't have to feel them cutting my eyelid if apart. If they ask you how you feel, there are two answers: anxious or nervous. Either one mm -hmm. of those. Yeah. I'm already in pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the point of the fentanyl. Like, uh, yeah, I'm anxious. I'm scared. Shit like that. Yeah, uh, I, I talked. That's the main thing I asked him on the phone. I asked about scarring and I asked about anesthesia. And uh, and, and he's like, no scarring, lots of anesthesia. I'm oh, like, those are the answers you want. Yes. Those are the answers you want. So, uh, so, yeah, they'll cut a wedge. They'll make sure they got clean margins. Sew me up. And I ordered a really fucking cool eye patch off of Etsy that's handmade. Yeah. So I'll be rolling that thing. And I'm not going to spoil it, but it's, uh, it's, it's one of those movie, video game, like iconic eye patches uh, that I'm going to. I feel like it'll look pretty nice. Cool. Iconic eye patches. Yeah. I look forward to it. Is that what you Googled? No, it's not like <laughs> Google. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's what. No, I. Uh... <laughs> I, oh, I, I Googled oh, custom made okay. eye patches and uh, and it led me to an Etsy link where some fucker makes these like leather fancy eye patches from a certain property. So I ordered and it. That cannot be a very large marketplace to serve. He, there was only one for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I got the last one. So either they're very hot or that's the only one he ever made. Either way, limited edition. I'm telling you, hon, as soon as the first one orders and gets the word out there, we're going to be selling them like hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> might be right. You guys might out there might see my cool eye patch and be like, God damn, that's a good look, Kyle. I found two cool eye patches. I think I know which one is yours. I won't link, spoil it. Link it in here, and, I, and I'll we, confirm or deny. Should okay. we solidarity purchase eye patches? Oh, that'd be cool, boys. <laughs> Get the <laughs> Mad Eye Moody one from Harry Potter. That'd be cool. I don't know. It's got like, oh, well, you, you really should get into the. That's the exact one I bought. <laughs> I bought that one. You'll <laughs> notice. <laughs> you'll notice there are no more of those for sale. That is the one I bought. And it was Woody's first guess. <laughs> yep. Nailed it. Uh, $30. Looks it, like Solid Snake. It says right? ships in one to two business days. So they might, might, might have restocked. Oh, it's on the way. Oh, I, I ordered <laughs> as soon as I got the diagnosis. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, it's a really serious diagnosis. Uh, Doc, am I going to get lots of drugs? And what are your recommendations on eye patches? <laughs> well, will you, we'll provide one to you at the hospital. <laughs> no, I was talking about serious eye patches. Like, <laughs> even after the procedures I'm finished. looking to style and profile. All right, do you understand? Like, yeah. You'll during the PA a... trip, we have to have like an intervention with Kyle being like, Kyle, you got to take off the patch, man. It's... <laughs> For nine months and he's like this is who i am now <laughs> i'm a patch got, man <laughs> i know but and, and the patch was fine but you're carrying a scimitar in the peg leg the parrot is <laughs> shitting everywhere kyle the parrot and no matter what you say you're not teaching it to say anything it's saying race and death <laughs> it's hearing in the background you play in your car <laughs> it's it's made our trips outside very uncomfortable here in atlanta <laughs> the jews control the world <laughs> 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 I think they'd uh I think it'd be saying a different word if it was listening to hip hop. I found know, a pretty cool eye patch, but ninety-six dollars. <laughs> ninety-six dollars. Yeah, you want to see that? Does one? it restore sight? What the fuck is that thing? The, the dragon eye. That that oh, one. that's that's the gayest thing I've ever seen. 
Well, now that I look at it through yeah, that lens, retarded, I see. You're going to look when your good eyes looking over here and you got one straightforward dragon eye. You're not going to look intimidating. You're going to look ridiculous. Oh, the dragon eye is this one. <sighs> oh, what the hell is this one? Modern steampunk eye patch that doesn't even seem to cover the eye. <laughs> but That's for, awful. Uh, well, I mean, I, now, now that you say it, I see it. I can see this bitch's eye through the... <laughs> <laughs> through the screen. Uh, it, it's the fact that the dude isn't, you know, he's low T. If the model you was know. a little higher T, maybe it'd pull off better. That's a handsome man, Woody. I don't know what you're talking about. He's got the little chin cleft. A, a handsome he's man, those... but he still has the peach fuzz on the side of his chin, his jawbone there. Why is his <sighs> shirt made of lug nuts and screws and nails? Washers and shit, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm not buying from this person. I'll find another seller. Oh, we haven't done any ads yet. Yeah, it's time. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Humble Bundle. Humble Choice is the PC gaming subscription that lets you keep your games forever. Get a variety of games to keep forever from indie games to larger hit games. The Humble Trove is a library of over 90 DRM-free games that has new titles added to it once a month. Featured games have included my friend Pe Pedro, Call of Duty World War II, Crash, Bandicoot, Spyro, and more. There are three plans for subscribers to choose from, starting from $4.99. That's the light plan. Uh, that provides access to the Trove and up to 10% off the Humble Store, all the way up to the $19.99 premium plan, which lets you choose nine games to keep forever, Trove access, and up to 20% off the Humble Store. Plus, 5% of those subscriptions go directly to charities. The charity that they've been uh, benefiting lately is uh, Direct Relief. And that helps fund PPE for doctors and nurses, medications, supplies, etc. for people with severe cases of COVID-19. Subscribe now at try.humblebundle.com slash PKA. That's try.humblebundle.com slash PKA. The, uh, the code is case sensitive, so make sure that the PKA is in lowercase. No caps, otherwise it just won't work. Check them out. Get cool stuff. Check them out. I've got a lot of friends who are uh, using Humble Bundle. And they like it a lot. They get a ton of free games. They uh, get to try stuff out. They say it's a good deal. They like it a lot. Super true. <sighs> also, let me go ahead and just knock out Blue Chew as well. Uh, let's talk about sex. Good sex, guys. Remember the days when you were always ready to go. Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up, BlueChew.com. That's blue like the color blue. BlueChew.com blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FTA improved ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know it's the real deal. And it's the stuff that works. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as the pill. So you can always be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Now, this isn't just for guys with dysfunction. This is for any guy out there who wants extra function and to enhance their performance in the bedroom. Blue Chew is prescribed online. It ships straight to your door in a discreet package. So there's no in-person doctor visits, no waiting in the pharmacy, and best of all, no more awkwardness. They're made in the USA, and since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than the pharmacy. Right now, we got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get the first shipment for free when you use our special promo code PKA. You just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E, BlueChew.com. Promo code PKA to try it for free. Blue Chew, the faster, cheaper, better choice. Bunch of guys have used that code. <clears throat> Everybody's happy. Absolutely. I signed my dad up. Especially the ladies. Yeah. Dad uh, Dad had a lady over the other day. Uh, he, had, he had never had her over before. And um, it, it, it's, it's kind of weird to get to his address because uh, it's like a, kind of like a hidden driveway. So he has this lady come to the driveway that leads to his farm instead because it's easier to see from the highway. And uh, so she, he's parked in like his like ATV thing. Like uh, it's like a... I don't know what to call it. It's, it's, it's one of those big, like, it's got a dump bed on the back and a bit and like two rows of seats. And anyway, it's like an, it's, it's a big ATV thing. And uh, he's got, he's always got, he's got all these dogs that he's rescued that people have dumped out. He's literally got like three or four farm dogs with him all the time. And they, they live, they live, they live at the farm and he takes care of them. Well, she pulls up, gets out of her car and he notices she's slurring her speech a little bit. And he's like, ah, oh, that's never a good sign. Well, sometimes it's a good sign, but probably not right now. That's not good. And right as he's noticing that, the dog, two of the dogs start having the most ridiculous dog fight of all time. They're mm. roll, they're, one of them has bit the other one on the neck, and they've both started rolling like two fur balls 
just screaming and howling and growling. And he's trying to stop them, get them apart. Well, he was parked right over a creek. There's like a, a drainage pipe that runs under the road, and he was parked right on top of it. The dogs roll into the creek. And he quickly sees that if he doesn't intervene, one of the dogs is literally going to drown the other one in the fucking creek. And the oh, woman, the woman is screaming. And so, so he runs down the bank, jumps into the creek, and he's, and one of the dogs is literally holding the other one under the water, fucking drowning it. And so he reaches down in the water and he Was grabs that a police the dog by chance. No, that's the one that <laughs> fucking kitty's got her out. Like, I wish it would drown in a bowl. <clears throat> His dog. He pulls the drowning dog up out of the water and he looks behind him and she has rolled down the fucking bank and she's in the creek too now. She was like all dressed up and now hmm. she's like chest deep in the creek. And so he hands her a dog. He's like, here, take this one. And he gets the other one and they're fighting to get toward each other. And finally, like, he, you know, he's like slapping the dog around like, stop, fucking stop. And the dog hmm. stops. So they start climbing up the bank and it's all, you know, it's Georgia. So it's this red, muddy clay Super that we have here. Grease. It's gross. They get up the top of the bank. They, When they started this fucking meeting, they've only known each other for 10 minutes now. Mm. <laughs> when they started, they were both dressed really nicely. They're dressed for a date, essentially. And now they are both soaking wet and covered in mud. And she just has made it to the top of the, the bank to where the road is again. And he starts to like sort of like well that was kind of crazy huh and she trips and falls and rolls all the way back down into the creek again <laughs> and That's now three stooges shit <laughs> yes so now she crawls all the way back up and she's now she's just completely filthy she's covered in this mud she's got like creek weed on her or whatever the fuck and uh, and he and, and he's like all right we've we've got to clean up this is ridiculous she he, Follow me back over to my house. So she gets in her car and he gets on his little uh, ATV and he just he didn't drives put her in the, the bed. She's a mess. <laughs> it was her car. So he didn't care <laughs> if she messed it up or not, I guess. So they drive to his house and he, he's like, we got to get a shower. So they both get into the shower naked together. And I'm like, ah, this thing's going to work out nicely. She's like, yeah. And he's like, she's still slurring her speech a little bit, but she seems to be okay. So she's like, I'm going to wa wash your back. And he's like, all right, sounds good to me. So he, you know, he, he passes her the soap and she's washing his back and everything. And they're, they're in the shower. And all of a sudden he hears, tick, 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 tick. She has fallen out of the shower, grabbed the shower curtain. And on the way down, she's ripped every shower ring as she fell. Bing, 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 bing. Fallen head first into the toilet, what is which this is next to the disability? shower. What a careless bitch. She has fallen onto the toilet and knocked the toilet off of its like base. Does and she have Parkinson's? Now there's water flooding. <laughs> now I there's water flooding because she has broken the toilet by she's hit it at the perfect angle. She's fallen out of the shower, hit the top of like <laughs> like like the toilet and knocked it over, and the water is flowing up now. How large is this woman? <laughs> Regular size. She just hit it just right apparently. Okay. So it's gracious. They get out. Still a little soapy, but they dry off anyway. Cause goddamn, we've got a new problem to solve. Mm. So he gets the water cut off to that. He like turns the the knob or whatever, and that's all good. Although now we're down to three toilets in the two toilets in the home, and got to keep your eye on this one. And she's knocking them out left and right. <laughs> <laughs> and you got water damage to deal with now, probably. Ah, his tile floor, it'll be fine. But but so so then like he puts her clothes and his clothes into the washing machine, and he's had that washing machine for at least. 10, 12 years or something like that. It's not like a new fancy digital one. It's the old like crank the yeah. knob kind of washing machine. So puts all the clothes in there, grabs her some like pajama type clothes. He puts on some clothes and he's he's like, let's uh let's step out on the back porch and just relax for a minute. Would you like a beer? And she's like, yeah. So they get they each get a get a beer and they they go to the back porch. He's got a nice little back porch area. You can sit in a swing. He's got a little garden out there. The swimming pool's just beyond that. It's a nice little place to What's hang out. What's she wearing? Chill. His clothes? Did you say that? He had some pajamas or something. He put okay. it in. I don't know, some sweatpants, a t-shirt, whatever. Well, while he had gone to get the beers, she had started tinkering with the washing machine because she wanted cold, cold, not hot, cold on her clothes. She didn't want them to shrink or oh whatever. Oh my god! This well, is reasonable. When, because she changed to cold, <laughs> cold mid-cycle, she has confused the washing machine. Mm. 
when they walk back into the laundry room from like this little back porch area, the whole laundry room is flooded. So is the kitchen. <laughs> so is the kitchen and the bathroom, which is attached. Now the bathroom is flooded again. The kitchen is flooded completely. And the entire laundry room, which is a big laundry room, as big as this whole room I'm in, flooded, flooded, flooded. The whole I'm washing machine is overfilling, point. overfilling. And he's like, the fuck did you do? What have you done now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that, and you know, what are you saying? That's reasonable. I would put to you that it is not. If okay. I go to someone's, let's say I go to Kyle's house or your house and I fall out of the shower and my head shatters the porcelain everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's possible. You know how many things in your house I'm going to touch from that second on? Zero. <laughs> I'll, I'll be letting you guys open the fridge for me to get a soda. I'll be like, hey, Kyle or Woody. Do you mind if I grab now? Watch the whole process. <laughs> I never got it, and we're done. Okay. I, I would not be fucking around with settings Taylor, on your. Office this is yet. how we use a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Notice oh, no, no headbutts. Fall into it head first, you know, <laughs> outside of the shower. So yeah, like that's totally her fault. You should not be fucking with settings on people's appliances after you do something like that. You should be thankful they're not kicking you out. Okay. She spent the night. She spent the oh. night. He wakes up the next morning. Wakes up the next morning. Can't find her. Where is she? Where's she gone? He thought the worst. He's like, "What has she done now?" <laughs> She's fallen. He, she he comes get up. up. He he throws open the bedroom door. Runs into the living room, looking around for a fire or or, <laughs> or a hole in the entire wall of the house or a car parked in the kitchen. A Kool Aid no, man a, shaped hole in the side. No, I'm <laughs> Inspect your septic tank. <laughs> <laughs> or like she's going to check the attic insulation and her feet are just hanging from the <laughs> ceiling kicking. <laughs> it's like some like some fucking home alone shit. But she, she slips on a bunch of marbles and steps on her. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out the bed was just too stiff for her. She went to sleep on the couch. He put her in her car, directed her toward her home, and he has not seen her since. Oh, uh, Kyle, she's to come to the full paint can top of the stairs <laughs> <laughs> for our home. I she was... dodged the first two, don't they all? <laughs> No I, one expects the third can. I'm a <laughs> fool. I, I was secretly hoping that shared experience was the beginning of a relationship. Ah, oh, he'll keep fucking her. <laughs> yeah. He's the man's good around the house. All right, like, like, <laughs> a trip to Home Depot is a is a little vacation to him. He's gonna love fixing that stuff up. Excuse me, sir. I know more than you. Or old <laughs> exactly. Swanson, yet. Yeah, yeah, or the I think or Hank Hill. Yeah, I think they took that right from fucking King of the Hill. But, yeah, they uh, did. Okay. Uh, yeah, is your dad a Hank Hill kind of guy? Where it's almost like something is broken, and he's like excited to to get working on it. Because I've always wished I could be that guy, but when something breaks around my house, I'm like, this sucks. I need to call a real man. Um, it depends what's broken. If it's uh, if it's someone with a car, he's he, he really enjoys working on cars, and he's uh, he's he's really knowledgeable as as long as it's not fuel injected, because he doesn't have all the diagnostic equipment to to diagnose computers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's fuel injection, um, you know, he built and raced race cars for years, carbureted. Uh, he built and raced race cars for years, so he's really good with engines, transmissions, and you know the, the whole drivetrain stuff. And then he owned a paint and body shop for many years as well. So anything paint and body, he's really good at too. And he taught himself up upholstery, so. He likes doing doing car stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I don't but that around the house stuff. shit. Not that's not titillating him. I, it's not titillating, but he's proficient in all of it except for HVAC. We call he we always called an HVAC guy. Um, HVAC is really like, tough. That's like the mob. You got to go through them. You need to call Anthony Cumia. I'm you. glad you said that. Dude, one, it's hard to buy HVAC parts. Um, you know, if you buy a car. There are libraries dedicated to how to work on that car. Even if it's a new fuel injected tricky one, you know, there's a Haynes manual out there that explains it to you and tells you how to use your multimeter to, you know, do your best and and such. HVAC, it's simple, like in theory, but there's no information on how to fix things on your own. Yeah. It is incredibly difficult. Yeah, they they're like the mob and they 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 really try to upcharge you on everything, like mm -hmm. tons of in, inflation on the parts. Um, I, I remember he got, he got the HVAC, excuse me, fixed once. And, and then he found like a list of the parts and saw how much they'd upcharged him. And he called and complained. He was like, he's like, I'm not going to pay this. I'm not going to pay this. 
I'm absolutely not. You can come pick the parts up, take them back out of my fucking like like heater HVAC system because like like you're charging me 350 percent what this part costs and 280 percent what this car part costs, and I was already paying you 35 dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. Like no, no, come come get your shit, and they just cut the bill like from I- like. Twelve hundred dollars to three hundred dollars or something. Yeah, good for him. I feel like I've had that experience without the negotiating like skill. You know, I I, I paid fifty seven hundred for a new. It's called a gas pack. It does your heat and AC in yeah. one unit. And fifty seven hundred. This is a long time ago too. Like back in the Apex house, and it was just so much. And it was not a, even like a major brand like Train or something. And uh, they made us feel like we were lucky. They. I think they genuinely did prioritize us because we only had one as opposed to like one for each floor. And we had like a kid, one of the babies, one of the kids was a baby. So they kind of did us first, but they did us hard. Yeah. Those people are shitty. Um, yes. they'll, they'll, I, I've dealt with some of them who would quote 12,000 on a job and then you get another guy and it'd be 1500. And it's like, that is a lud- Who's getting 12,000. How far in my ass was he trying to break it off? God damn. Mm. Yeah, that's yep. insane. So what you guys have been homeowners much, much, much longer than I have. HVAC full of crooks, apparently. Mm-hmm. What other little industries do I need to be wary of? Uh, pretty much anyone in the home trades? inspector. Home inspector is going to be sketchy. You need to really look at what kind of warranty comes along with um, or guarantee comes along with their work. Um, and ma- make sure make sure they're going to be liable. Yeah. And the, the home inspectors, you have to check the motivations, right? So. A lot of home inspectors get their work from real estate agents, right? And it's to their advantage to give that house the thumbs up. If Mm -hmm. if, if you're an agent and I'm an inspector and I start ruining deal after deal, you find a new inspector. Now, if they do a bad job, that opens them up for other liabilities. So they have to kind of thread the needle there. But if you hire the home inspector, you know, if you say, ah, the real estate agent's like, I'll get the, I'll get you a good one. You know, you don't know anything about inspectors. I'll take care of it for you. You say, no, thank you. I can Google. You hire your own home inspector so that his motivation is to serve you. See, that's what I should have said. Because you know how, obviously, when you're buying a house, you get a home inspector to come out there and do everything. And I had this person recommended to me by family. And they missed obvious shit. Like there were gutters that weren't connected the right way and that were going to fuck up if, if someone hadn't noticed afterward and fixed it. The dishwasher straight up did not close and had stagnant water sitting in it. Missed that. Oh, and apparently that's a- under what I was looking at, uh, appliances were covered. And so I that it, they should have, according to my home warranty company, they're like, oh yeah, if they would have caught that right away, we would have replaced it. And so I've gone on a back and forth with them trying to fix my fucking Samsung dishwasher, which apparently, according to every guy who comes out here, they're like, Ugh, Samsung, huh? Yep. They put five boards in it and it is just the most complicated dishwasher of all time. You know what you should get? You should get a Whirlpool. It has a button that says wash and then <laughs> it washes. And I was like, I have damn, a- that's what I want. Kid- Kitty has a Samsung washer and dryer. I've heard about them. And I'm not in the business or anything. They're like famous. Is it Neptune by chance? That's a model under Samsung. My, it's, it's like a, it's metallic gray and mm-hmm. it's all digital. And I have to period. I can take that son of a bitch apart like <laughs> a goddamn NASCAR pit crew. <laughs> I have the tools that do it all together with the right bits on them. I go over there and I'm like... <laughs> And she's out of the pits and ready to wash again in three point five minutes. It sounds like it must be. It has a it has a filter. Um, it's like the last like thing to stop junk Mm -hmm. from like going down into like the the wastewater line, Mm -hmm. and it clogs routinely on things it shouldn't clog on. Now. You wash a condom and it's going to end up down in there and that causes a problem. I guess maybe I understand that. Right. Sorry I left the condom <laughs> in my in my stuff, kitty. Gross. Whoopsie daisy. I'm the one that had to clean it out. It's not gross. I'll fuck, <laughs> fucking suck that bitch clean. It's already been <laughs> washed. <laughs> I'll fuck that bitch clean. It just went through the washer. It just wash went through the washer. It's fine. That's the other thing. When you pull... So you have to take the 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 door off the washer, like the, like the big, like porthole clear door that has to yeah. come off. The, the top of the washer comes off. The entire control panel comes off 
and uh, one of the enti- and the entire front of the washer has to come off. All of these things have to come off so that you can get in there and you like put your hand in this hole, turn a thing a quarter turn, and then pull it out, and then it's full of junk, like lint and rubber bands and like money. A lot. Of, I found a twenty dollar bill last time. I figured that was my tip for doing the job, <laughs> and and just junk, and it smells like actual shit. Because it's like stagnant, like gross Ooh. water has yeah. been like soaking denim lint for weeks and weeks and weeks, I guess. And it's just like rotten in there. Yeah. And it does that every month, every every two months at least. I've taken it apart so many times I can't I can't count them. Is this I, a new washer she has? It's probably five years old now, but it was brand new when we got it, you know. That's it's a Sam every month. You can watch the. You go to the YouTube video. You like type in Samsung Whirlpool, whatever it's called, like Neptune, whatever that model is. It's like how to fix clogged drain. This guy takes a sawzall and cuts a hole right through the front of the whole fucking washing machine, so he doesn't have to do all that shit I just described again. <laughs> he just like he. You look at his, and he's got this huge jagged U-shaped <laughs> hole in the front of his washing machine. He's like fixed it. It's like now, playing operation with the top. Like you get your hand in there without touching the sides. He's made the hole so goddamn big. Oh, it's he? not a problem. <laughs> like, I but- found the video immediately. This video of Samsung washer won't drain. Easy to do yourself. Fix WA45H7000AW. 210,000 views. <laughs> do you think their SEO Ten- is, monetized or is, is optimized? No. It's so many people having problems <laughs> At least 10,000 of those views are mine because it took me a while to memorize how to do that shit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's 200,000 views on the fix of Samsung washer. This yeah. guy's biggest video is him doing that. I can see why Kitty bought it and the dishwasher too. Samsung appliances have the best curb appeal. It, it, like, and they, they look wonderful in the showroom and they often get prime. Like if you go to a Home Depot or something, prime locations, they're on the end cap and the two of them are next to each other and they're sitting on top of pedestals that maybe you put, I don't know, soap mm-hmm. in or something so that they're like neck high it, you, know, you just, and everything looks so wonderful. It looks like what you want in your house, but the owner experiences are notorious. Yeah. They're my, beautiful. My Samsung fridge is perfect. Works mm. great. Apparently much easier to work a fridge than a... I mean, thing six months old hasn't given me a problem in its entire lifetime. That is true. <laughs> this thing's cold. <laughs> it was, I, my washer dryer are Whirlpool, and my fridge, I think, is Samsung, or maybe that's even Whirlpool. I don't fucking know. But I do know that they are all brand fucking new and that the people I bought the house from were not happy when I, like, demanded that those be included in the mm. in the price. So they are... My washer and dryer are real fucking nice. But, yeah, my dishwasher, that was a big mistake. Big mistake I, not to get that replaced. I bought a brand new washer and dryer uh, last year, and uh, I just got a basic one. I, just, I think it was like thirteen hundred for the pair, something like that, mm-hmm. like seven hundred fifty, eight hundred each, like maybe sixteen, maybe fourteen, fifteen hundred with taxes and everything. I fucking love them. They work yeah. so well. I, mm-hmm. I got no problem with. There were like, there was like twenty two hundred dollars sets, and I was like, how much cleaner are those clo- people's clothes that got the. They paid an extra grand for their washer and dryer. Oh, these old fuckers that I bought this house from apparently fell for that and got the real expensive washer dryer. <laughs> I remember it was before I bought this house. We had that discussion where you were like, you could take a shit into a washer. <laughs> it's going to be fine. And I was like, that's not true. And then looking at this one, I could take the foulest duke <laughs> in there on my clothes and it's coming out squeaky clean. And so, <laughs> That's true. That's what a yeah. <laughs> I can see you work in marketing and I look forward to your advertising <laughs> campaign. <laughs> Soupy dump all over my own clothes. Just to prove a point. Billy Mays here taking a steamy dump on my own clothes. I'm going to show you how OxyClean gets it out of the. <laughs> that was not OxyClean, by the way. That was okay. Yeah, dude, I... RIP Billy Mays. He had the funny commercials. Yeah. Poor uh, guy. And he was so coked out of his mind. During all of those, that's how he got so so excited for cleaning products. Yeah, we got Kablam here. Look at this fucking a, a, a hooker I killed last night. Blood all over the carpet. Fucking spray it. Dabs right up. <laughs> I don't think he killed a hooker, but maybe he did. So tell me about the wire. So the wire. This character Zig. I mean, season two, the doc season, and I think that I underestimated when you guys said. That's the doc season. 
I didn't think every fucking scene would be at this bar or at this dock. I'm I'm like five episodes in to season two or so, and I'm already getting bored with the dock shit. Ziggy, the son of the uh, union guy, I I hate him more than Ramsey. I hate him more than Jeff King Joffrey. He is so unlikable. I, I I can't get over him. I want him to die so bad. I loved that scene where he's talking shit to some wigger retard on the side of the street and being like, "You better have my full money next time." You think you're you think I'm playing with you? You know who you're messing with? Wearing his two thousand dollar Italian leather jacket, he looks like a fucking retard in. And then immediately after that, he gets in his car, robbed by a bunch of actual gangsters, and he's mm-hmm. like weeping and crying. I love that scene because fuck Ziggy. But yeah, this guy, yep. he's got to die. He's too. I can't decide yet if he's so unlikable he's gonna die or if he's so unlikable they're gonna I let him. I have empathy for Ziggy. I, oh, I don't. So he, here's the thing: he wasn't gifted with any kind of like physique. You know, th- this guy's biceps are no bigger than his wrists. He's got a huge cock. True. That, that's we'll circle to that. But like, he lives in a world of like union workers, tough guys. You know, a, a place where ability to win a fight like matters more so than you know, somebody's IT department. Mm-hmm. But he's born into last place. He just is. There's nothing he can do about it. And, and when he's dealing with drug dealers or all the crime side of it, he's unequipped. You know, he, he, he's just unable to compete. And he's trying to be tough. He's trying to, and his, his father left some pretty big footsteps or shoes to fill. You know, so he, he's, he's trying to be the man, but he's just born into perma child. And like, what's he <clears throat> supposed to do? How is he supposed to thrive in this environment of dock see, workers? I, I see what I see where you're coming from there a bit, but also it's like I don't think he was born in last place. He has a very powerful father within the union, and if he were a halfway smart guy, I feel like he could just be like, "All right, I'm going to put my nose to the grindstone here, really demonstrate my value on the docks, and naturally have some upward mobility because of my father's place." And instead, he's like, "All right, my dad's hardcore. He's in the union." I'm going to be hardcore with drug dealers. And and he's just not. He doesn't have the vibe for it. He looks like a bitch, sounds like a bitch. He's, I feel so stupid. bad for his like tall friend who is constantly trying to be like, "Hey Ziggy man, like can we like settle down a bit and can you just take the money and put it in your savings account, put it in, you know, Chase Bank and then that's it." And then he'll yeah, show that's up his cousin. And get, and, yeah, his cousin. And so I feel bad for the cousin because he seems to be it seems like Ziggy is going to very soon, hasn't happened yet, put him in a position to do something horrible, would be my guess, based on how the plot's going. Because he You'll keeps- like how it all turns out, don't worry. I hope Ziggy's murdered uh, horribly, by the way. I hope he's killed in an awful way, and I hope his cousin survives. And I do like the union boss, too. He seems Frank like Sabatka. a no-nonsense kind of guy. Yeah, Frank Sabatka, I like him. I like... Um, Frank Sabatka, I, I had empathy for also, right? So Frank Sabatka does some bad things, but fuck, he's, it's a means to an end, right? He's trying to... Frank Sabak is the union leader, and yep. he really cares about the people in his union. And He's playing the hand he's dealt, too. Like, it's not like he chose this. Yeah, man. so he, he's, he's doing some bad shit. Uh, when other people do bad shit, he's like, man, this is going to hurt the union, right? Not... Mm-hmm. Like, that's what he cares about. All the way to his core... He wants the people that he represents to thrive as best as possible, you know, yeah. in the best way possible. So even when he decides to break some laws, well, it, it's not that he wants to be a criminal. He's not self-enriching. He's trying to, I think, bribe politicians or something. So I, I like that guy. Yeah, and he helps his own people, too. Like when he's like, hey, you want to switch to 47? Totally fine. I'll support you tomorrow. Just take this money. Go buy yourself a beer and a shot from whatever bar. And then, like, it's... His money, basically, like he's he's keeping his own guys afloat, even though the work isn't coming in. And so I like Frank Sabatka. Uh, it really I like pretty much every character now. I'm I'm pretty bummed out that D died because I liked D too. Nah, I did not fuck see D. that. I, I didn't like I, D. Oh, D was D was trying to t- turn straight, and I like that about D was D. being a dumbass. All D had to do was say, "Yeah, Avon, whatever you say," and he'd have been out of fucking prison. Yeah, but he also had principle about it, and he was like, I don't want to live like this. And so I like that about D. Yeah, it's too late to start growing some principles once you're doing fucking 10 years in, fe- in, the, feder- in the state pen. Was it 20? Yeah. It was 10. I thought, no, I'm pretty it sure it's 10. 20. No, it no, was I, it was 20, and they thought he'd serve 10. That's what it yeah. is. Ah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
worse. Well, yeah, that's that's not the time to grow some fucking morals or or, or something like that. Like, no, 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 no. The time for that was before you made that little trip to NYC to pick up the bag. I know exactly. Right? What you're about, logically, I'm just saying I liked D as a character, and so when he died, I was very surprised by that. Especially the kind of unser and that's oh. something that I've heard from people is that a lot of the deaths in the show are very unceremonious. You know, even if they're a very major player, they kill them. There was no. Who was the chick we all liked from? Uh, Game of Thrones. She had balls, but she was like thirteen. Lady uh, of Bear, something of Bear Island. Mormont, yeah. maybe like Mormont, a, yeah. yeah, Mormont. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, she had a very ceremonious death where she goes down swinging against a giant or something like that. Uh, dragon. Who the fuck knows? Anyway, it was, a giant. was it? Yeah, very dumb. <laughs> and uh, but in in the wire, you know, you just get tapped. You just get choked. Like, you know, there's there's no big pomp and circumstance See, around it. Died in the wire, it would have been her, like, looking brave for half a second and then just a foot coming down. Just an mm -hmm. arrow hits her in the head. I'm watching. I, see, I'm on the final season right now, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but, like, a main character is, like, going about their day. Bop. If I had to guess, I'd guess Omar. Because no. Omar is going to survive for a while now. I don't I think, think I've seen the end, and my guess is McNulty, but I don't know. Um, I'll be so bummed if they kill McNulty. I like McNulty. Well, it's last season. Main you cheat on your wife, you pay the price. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, end of first season. I was trying to tell you without spoiling it, like just how all the endings didn't quite line up. Stringer, scot free. Barksdale, that's his name, right? Small, mm -hmm. you know, two years. D. Okay. He, all right. Well, he gets it down to like 18 months. And yeah, he was put in for seven, but they're saying like he, he's given a lot of dirt right now where I am. Kyle's right. There's um, uh, there's a, it's almost two terms. They get seven and they say, I'll be serving two, which he gets even lower. So it's hard to, like I say he got two years, but Kyle says he got seven. There's, there's two ways to look at it. Hmm. Anyway, um, uh, the, how bad the people were, how senior the people were has nothing, is totally unrelated to what kind of sentences they got. And that was the part that I it was eye-opening to me. Not shocking. I know criminal justice system can work like that, but you know, the one that really took the biggest fall is not the biggest dude. He's not even the mm -hmm. worst dude. Uh, and there were other guys who didn't get prison at all. They just didn't have anything on him, but they were way worse. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting real tired of McNulty on the boat. <laughs> very, very tired of this. I'm Get not, used to it. It is so fucking boring. And then, like, I was, like, I was, like, sitting there watching it when um, Daniels is it? Daniels, the yep. the guy who's uh, the the black the cop, black trainer protector. in Spartacus, yep. and he's the one. He's like, but I get to pick my own team. And I was like, yes, yes, they're going to get McNulty off the boat finally. And then the the major, or I'm sorry, the colonel, whatever his name is, I don't recall. It's like everybody's fine. I'll approve every single person you pick except for McNulty. McNulty <laughs> stays on a boat. He either drowns or he retires. <laughs> God damn it. Like, I want him back. He's, he, you know, they seem to portray him as like a total booze hound guy who's like, maybe that continues as the show goes on because like the scene they just showed him is he's so miserable on the boats. He's like waking up and chugging beers before he goes out there because he, he isn't enthralled by that life whatsoever. So hopefully that changes. If that goes past the second season, I'm not going to be pleased. In season hopefully three, no. they make it clear that he's one of like five or six guys who can pursue major crimes like that. Good, good. Because I like McNulty and I like uh, Bunk. Is McNulty's he the black guy's partner. friend? Bunk Moreland. Yeah, yeah. I like Bunk. Bunk and McNulty, good team. I like those yeah. guys. Yeah. They're, they're my favorite little pairing. Second favorite little pairing, or maybe a, a, a triage, is the woman who got shot and then the goofy ass white guy and the, the black guy who are kind of like buddy cops in the first season. I like mm -hmm. those three. Yeah. By the way, that's the guy that plays Cedric Daniels is not the black guy from Spartacus. They don't all look alike, Taylor. Okay. Jesus, Taylor. Wait, the guy who. Is, he's not Zenus. The trainer or... from Spartacus is the same guy who, in the movie 300, who's the messenger who brings That's the crowns. Of. He brings you know the what? crowns and skulls of the I kings. Was watching that, and I was like, man, he really beefed up. For... <laughs> 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 That's so funny. He's, like, he's skinny as a rail here. Dude must have packed on 40 pounds of solid muscle. 
I was literally watching and thinking, and I was like looking up when Spartacus started. I was like, man, this motherfucker got yoked. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, but no, I guess different guy. Yeah. He was guy. doing more than fighting crime. God damn. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I like Daniels a lot. He seems like an honorable guy. He's got want, some dirt in his ass, but I like him. I want to point this out to Taylor though. Like the is it Negan? Who, who's the skinny white guy? What's uh, his name? Ziggy. Ziggy. Thank you. Thank you. You hate Ziggy. You're supposed to hate Ziggy. You're bored oh, of McNulty on the boat. <laughs> They want you to be bored of McNulty on the boat. That's like the, the pain that you're supposed to endure alongside of him. You know, you, you have these feelings about Zabaka. You know, and he, yeah, he's got flaws, but he's working on behalf of his. The Wire is getting from you everything they're trying to get from you. And, and I, yeah. to its credit, is where I'm headed. He's right. No, you, you're 100% right. And I, I know I'm supposed to hate Ziggy because yeah, some yeah. of his. Well, I didn't think you were. were so, oh, no, I, I know. <laughs> yeah. Like, some of his scenes are so over the top rude like when he lit a cigarette with a hundred dollar bill as these hard-working men are sitting there like knowing they can't say shit because he's the son of their boss effectively it was like god ziggy i right after he's given money by his cousin that he's supposed to pay off and it's like you and then ziggy's like oh i'm flush you can buy a you can buy around but i can't i'm flush now and it's like bitch i just gave you twenty five hundred dollars or twenty seven hundred dollars to pay yourself off and get whatever the name of your car is back so i Oh, that, that drove me crazy. I hated that scene. Princess. Princess, yeah. Get get your $2,700, you know, bribe to get your car princess back. It's got a 350 in it, though. Everything <laughs> about that guy is just begging to be respected. And there's nothing that, I don't know, warrants respect. And he, mm -hmm. he just doesn't know how to warrant respect. It's I love the when jacket, they put him it's up not the to... car, it's... I love when they put him up to hitting that guy, that big dude on the docks. Dude is like... Six one, a solid two thirty. Like hitting, killing him. No, no. They, 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 so, so Ziggy's got this problem with the the this big guy on the docks. You'll get to it. This isn't a terrible spoiler. Oh, you showed me this scene on the show before. Yeah, before I knew it. It's was so good. They're they're like, come on, just walk up to him and truck him, Ziggy. You're a legend. And and the other guy pipes in, yeah, legend of the docks. <laughs> and and they're like pumping Ziggy up for days. They're pump pumping him up. Until they're all by like the, I don't know, the coffee truck by the docks and, and the big boy like orders a cappuccino, right? Like, and, and Ziggy's like, cappuccino, what a pussy. And they go, yeah, he just looks big. <laughs> and I'm, like, <laughs> and I'm, and I'm thinking like, yeah, he does look big. <laughs> That's he's bigger than acting off the water near the dock. He's, <laughs> he's built like Taylor, but taller. Like this is a big boy, mm -hmm. and 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 he's got his back turned to Ziggy with a hard hat on. He's like doing some actual man construction type shit with a forklift, checking inventory out outdoors, and like mm -hmm. just walk up to him, give him your best punch, and walk away. <laughs> Truck his ass, Ziggy, and Ziggy just like walks up and goes for a kidney punch, and the guy just turns around like the fuck. <laughs> and just starts slapping the shit out of him, beats the shit out of him, no. and then puts him on the forklift, lifts him up, puts him on top of a fucking container 12, 15 feet in the air, pu pulls the forklift back down and goes, anybody lets him down, I'm whipping your ass, and leaves him up there. There's more. Like So I remember it a little differently. It, it, he goes for the kidney shot like he says, but I don't think the guy beat him up. I don't think he gave him the honor of getting beat up. He just kind of, like manhandled him and took him to the forklift where they put him on top of uh, shipping containers too high. Mm -hmm. And uh, he puts him up there, tells no one else that uh, that they're allowed to help him down. And the whole time Ziggy's yelling, you gave me bad advice! You <laughs> motherfuckers all gave me bad advice! That was bad advice! That was bad <laughs> advice! And they're all like, yeah, no shit! Because he's not only an asshole, he's a he's dumbass idiot. simultaneously. Yeah. He has no redeeming qualities, none whatsoever. Like at no point are you ever like, ah, oh, well, he did that one. No, he didn't do anything yeah, like that. Oh. Ziggy to die soon. Hopefully. We'll see. Or maybe a fate worse than death, some would say. Ugh, staying in the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, He'll no. be there in season three. He's going to the police academy. He's McNulty's new partner. That's how McNulty gets off the boat. I would genuinely stop watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, no, 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 off. I'm gonna go watch the Sunny and Family Guy reruns again. I'm not. Yeah, that would turn me off the show. Major Ziggy, what should we do? <laughs>
Yeah, Ziggy. I like when I like when they're, when the uh, when um uh the main gangster was um B and B uh Barksdale is yeah. in prison and uh, he's eating fucking KFC and he doesn't just have a little KFC he's got like the family pack he's got the sides yeah he's got the fucking family sides he's got like mashed potatoes and slaw and I'm eat- I'm like. Whew. That's good shit he's got. And that's the next thing he says. He's like, you better get in this. This is some good shit. <laughs> yeah, it is. God damn. And as he's doing that, you can see an Xbox, three or not even 360, just an Xbox controller sitting there. And I was like, that was the one thing that I saw when they had D come in that I was like, D, he's living the dream. Yeah. He's eating as much KFC as he wants, playing video games all day. Join the winning team here. But I did still have some respect for D wanting to get out even if it was the dumb move i, I like nah, I, I never ever liked d i think i just don't like how that actor looks and i don't talk about race or anything like that he's just <laughs> a weird looking fucking dude fucking dude right with his bug eyes and that gap in his teeth he's a little baby faced yeah i see what you're talking about that didn't bother me i i i kind of like that he had a position of leadership in spite of that look on the other hand he was relative of the leader so that's probably why he did yeah you know he's being carried along and and you know he 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 but he was that smart. guy. Smart. And which one did he murder? At, at the ver- the fir- when we're we're first introduced to him, the whole reason for the wire and the show is that D murdered a guy when he was running one of the towers instead of either care- taking an ass whipping or using his fist. You know, instead of fighting it out, he pulled out a gun and murdered a man in the lo- uh. in the in the ho- in the lobby of the one of the towers that they were selling drugs out of. Got the then he got demoted. And then that's how the wire gets started up because Judge Kalen, Halen or Kalen or whatever, like he's like, how did I just lose this case? How did you guys lose this case? And the McNulty explains it to him, and you know the ball yeah, gets that's when he gets moved to the pit and everything. And I don't remember. <clears throat> okay, so under him in the pit is the the guy who's dead now, who plays Black Panther. I don't remember his name. From yeah, Michael B. Jordan. Oh, Wallace. Wallace was his name. Uh, Poot. Don't give two shits about Poot. Is he uh, the one and- with the do rag thing? No, no, no. The, the- what, what's the do rag guy's name? He's it's something running. with a D. Um, yeah, I, I like him. I can see his character developing and growing, and I he's mm-hmm. interesting. I like him. Yeah. Um, nice. One of my favorite characters is Michael. You'll meet him in, uh, I think, season three or maybe I think season four. Actually, Michael is like a, an eighth grader who like r- has to like really mature quickly, mm-hmm. and he's like a badass eighth grader. And I, I like his character a lot. He's 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 a real it? badass. Yeah, well, it's it's been a, another it's fantastic good. recommendation. Thank you, Eric. Is anybody else jealous of my quarantine time that I had <sighs> The Sopranos and The Wire to watch fresh? That's that's high quality content. It's great. Yep, yep. Love it. I've been learning to paint. Get out of here. I've been enriching my soul. Fuck no, I'm not serious. <laughs> I'm a faggot. I was gonna make, <laughs> I was, I was gonna make fun of you. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're a Monet over here. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous. I wish I had something cool to watch like that. I've been. I've been watching fucking uh, uh, War- Rick and Morty, trying to like that. Yeah, I'm watching World of War uh, or not World um, Warhammer Two uh, guides and shit like that. Learning to be better at that game. I love that fucking game. But speaking of video games, Tarkov has wiped today. Dude, today Tarkov wiped as soon as it was available to get online. I did, which was 11 a.m. for me. I knocked out three or four games. It's nice and slick. I think they, they've done some optimization. I, I forgot to turn my FPS counter on so I could visualize and see what was up, but it felt like I was getting 100 frames. My um, The hideout responsiveness is way better now. Like the stash and the hideout. And it used to be like in this game, you might switch from dealers to whatever. And it, it it's just you don't expect things to take two and a half, three seconds, you know? Yeah. And now it's snappy like you used to. Yeah. Um, I played two games. The first one went great until the end. Like it's, I go in there, I've got my gun in my backpack, really weak shit because it's a wipe and everyone has weak stuff. I kill two scavs, every slot on me is filled. Uh, I am so close to the X fill. Like the whole point is to like escape from Tarkov, and I am a 12 second walk from getting out. I greedily stop by this little weapons crate, grab a pineapple juice, drink it skill my guy up a little bit as metabolism improves and i think that walk allowed that 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 eight seconds let someone catch up to me and i got shot just seconds from winning and it's like that's tarkov it hurts so much when you die and you know i have nothing we just wiped and now i have less than that 
Next one comes along. I made a bad play. Uh, that one is a little easier to die it, it, for me to accept. There's a guy inside. It was nighttime raid. I'm outside where there's a little more light. And um, I somehow thought that he would see me as poorly as I would see him. But mm. I had that backwards. And, uh, and he popped me in the head. One bullet, end of life. Ouch. So I'm over two. And then I had a scab run that was successful. And it just, it's. Tarkov is back to hurting again. I used to be so rich in that game before the wipe that yeah, if yeah. I died, like, it was all cool. Like It was more about just having fun and not trying <laughs> to get ahead. I was ahead. I had gotten ahead. And now I have to start over. I made it to level was, 48, which is pretty good. And uh, it was fun. I was running for the exfiltration. with I, I had a pair of night vision goggles I had found on, mm-hmm. uh, on reserve today. And, you know, it's like, I don't even have a red dot for my gun, but now that night vision goggles. I had them I too hel- on one of my. I desks. don't have a helmet to put them on, but I got goggles. I had that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had that. And, and I'm just like running, running, and somebody gunned me the fuck down. I think a real shitty like strategy for reserve is to wait inside the hermetic and camp the guys who click the button and go- come out because you know they're loaded. That's why they're doing it. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna camp in there. It, it, if I waste 30 minutes, I waste 30 minutes. But I'm gonna fucking do it. I think the guy that killed me, in my first story, where I was a few feet away or a few seconds away, I was exfil camping, and he just took my my ah, loaded. It's stuff. a legit strategy. I got no problem with it. I, I really he, don't. I've done it. I've been killed by it. It's, people, it's fairly rare. Yeah, it it, does, it happens every 15th, 20th games. Uh, people do it. I don't. I haven't. I've never set out to exfil camp. But I found myself in a position to exfil camp. Like, ooh, yeah. there's people coming. Um, but we uh, see, there's a difference to me though between like, all right, let's head for exfil. Wait a minute, somebody's coming. Well, hang on, hide. Like that doesn't seem like exfil camping to me. It's yeah. like it's like, oh, we're in a situation where like, there's a. Do we just leave and let him come out the door behind us? Like, no. Let's. There's three of us and one of him. But what we have done is like me and Larry and Devin and all those guys like on. Uh, What's the map with the mall? Uh, interchange. On interchange, we just set up. As soon <laughs> as the game starts, we all lay down in bushes with thermal scopes and just wait at the exfil zone because there's only really two. Mm-hmm. And we just camp it for 45 fucking minutes. We camp it for 45 fucking minutes and kill everybody who comes. Sure, that's shitty and scummy and maybe not what they want you to do. But I'm the one uh, with your shit. <laughs> but I'm the one with all your shit now. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a real cutthroat kind of game. And it, it, it's after, at that point, we've been playing so much like, like, you know, we're mixing it up with some different kind of gameplay. I, uh, douchebag gameplay. <laughs> yeah. I, I know the maps now. I'm pretty good. I spent a lot of time at the end of the last wipe upgrading me, right? Cause you can mm-hmm. upgrade your character, but that shit all is going to get wiped. Let's spend time on maps. I don't know as well. Let's learn stashes. Hey, where is ZBO 114 on woods? You know, like be able to find, where's the marked room on woods or like people don't know these details, but uh, I spent the end of last wipe learning maps and, and working on stuff. I would get to keep till the next wipe. Yeah, that's smart. Larry. I, I, I just checked. I just clicked over to Larry's discord. He's not playing. What, 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 what's up with him? Maybe Ooh. we get on tonight. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm attempting to get on the night. I don't know if I want to play solos or with the team. Like, it, I think I want to get with a team and and start grinding out the um, the, the quests. Missions. Yeah, that's a good idea because um, you got to get access to the the flea market. The challenge is the run through, so you might not know. I it used to be to avoid a run through was three hundred points. I think it's six hundred now. So you have to kill about two scabs and loot them to get through. Now, if you're running with a team of five. Either they're graciously allowing you to get the scab kills uh, because you're on YouTube, or everybody like we find ten scab kills and get them all and distribute them evenly. Like that's a lot to ask. I be- what I read in the in the patch notes were ten minutes oh, I did or six hundred points, and that's so true. I think I think we're all going to be solid as far as that goes because the punishment for a run through is so severe now. You don't get to keep the things that you found that you put in your gamma if you get a run through. Wrong. They're just That's not marked. Said. They're just not. They're just found not marked in raid. Which is essentially making them worthless. Well, you could like, sell them like, to traders. Yeah, which is essentially still making them worthless until they balance that all out. Because especially this early in the wipe, when when space is limited, we're getting a little nitty gritty here. But but still, it's 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 a it's a big punishment for, you know, getting a run through, especially for things in your gamma. Depending Let me do the, the last item. ad. Okay. 
<clears throat> Everyone hates talking to someone with bad breath. That humid, awful smell, it keeps you from focusing on anything other than finding an excuse to leave. Now just think about all the times that you were the gross, smelly one, and the other person was trying to find a way to get away. You probably can't think of any examples, and that's because we rarely have an accurate read on our own bad breath odor. In other words, you could be walking around with trash mouth and not even realize that you're grossing everyone out. That's why Smart Mouth was invented. Smart Mouth's clinically proven two-liquid system. Well, it combines to instantly eliminate bad breath and prevent bad breath from returning all day. Rinse once in the morning all uh, for all day clean breath and once before bed to prevent morning breath from even happening. Just two uses a day, you'll never have bad breath again. Guaranteed. Whether it's the bedroom or the boardroom, having success, having confidence in your breath spells success. So head on over to smartmouth.com slash PKA now for a free coupon. You can find Smart Mouth products in the oral health aisles of Walgreens, CVS, Target, Rite Aid, Amazon, Walmart, or wherever you shop. Once again, that's smartmouth.com slash PKA for your free coupon. I think we all use it like twice a day. It it's really like does. It's a real thing. Yeah. If I don't use Smart Mouth before I go to bed, like sometimes, sometimes I'll just be really tired and I, I won't use it. I'll just jump in bed and fall asleep. My mouth is, it's like a cat shit in my mouth when I wake <laughs> up. I'm just like, oh, oh, the worst the other day. I, um, I woke up late. I didn't have time to do anything. I couldn't brush my teeth. I couldn't do Smart Mouth. All I had time for was like throw clothes on and rush out the door. And I, I had my mask on, you know, my prevent from getting the COVID. Mm. And every breath I could smell because <laughs> I've got that mask on. Uh, so every time I, and I exhale, you can smell it. And I, I'm smelling my own, and I'm just like, oh, I hope this is protecting the people around me from my bad <laughs> breath because this is rough. Uh, Gotta have your smart mouth. It's it really is good stuff. Um, you know, Listerine or something like that'll like cover up the smell but it's yeah. you know it's just like anything else you want to remove the smell they've improved mouthwash up. since the 1920s yes yes they have there's no alcohol in there it doesn't dry your mouth out they've even got a special formula for dry mouths it's good stuff grab yourself some so apparently john krasinski is getting hazed by the world have you followed this at all yeah nobody's allowed to make money wouldn't so, want that to happen for people that don't know here's the here's the take on it he made a podcast during the pandemic called Some Good News. And he would have guests on and he you know, fired up this thing. And it, using his pre-existing popularity, he instantly was a big hit. And people liked his podcast. And, uh, and it was a feel-good web series and you know, make people, it aims to bring happier news to people during the current pandemic. Yeah, cool. all, the news, all the news was bad. It was always virus this, tsunami that, whatever. Yeah. And then his show was all about, here are the... Here are the great things that are happening right now. Are you now. talking about it's, Jim from The Office? Yeah. Yeah, John Krasinski. And did you hear that? Uh, so anyway, he took that great news, goodwill, et cetera, from the pandemic, and he sold it to the highest bidder. And now the show is moving behind a paywall. Who did he sell it to? It's not on this article. That's hilarious. Was it, <laughs> was it CBS? Good for him. Viacom CBS. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah. And buy a show called Some Good News. They couldn't have made just a blatant rip off of that. Oh, like maybe no, they wanted Krasinski himself to be on it. They're going to want John, John Krasinski. And, and I'm sure that like, I mean, the man's got a team of people that they probably trademarked some good news right away. You know, he's you're, you're right. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm 80% on the side of make a book, make a book. You know, you, the guy works in entertainment. He created a podcast and then he made money off his podcast. Dude, uh, it's just, just Viacom. Call Sounds kind of familiar. Yeah, Viacom. Give me, <laughs> give us a call and, uh, you know, we'll see uh, what we can work out. What a piece of shit. Um, you, where's on Bobby the other hand, hand ski, right? I, <laughs> no. More. <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, I also, I don't know, something about the whole good news, happy go lucky, sell out in six weeks thing. Like strikes me as a little quick and a, and a little, I, I don't know. I, I guess maybe I just expect it to be a little more, uh, uh, not pro bono, but like, what's the opposite of male benevolent mm -hmm. because the whole thing was about good news and good vibes. And then it feels like you had a pretty hardcore profit. Exactly. It's like sold people, 
was but, about like, oh, Jim from the office wants to talk about fun things. And really it was like, oh, he was parlaying into the mainstream media, uh, basically a pitch for uh, now. I'm not I, I'm not so sure that I'm going to buy in that, like from the all, all the way from the beginning, that this was a money making scheme. First of all, the man's a multimillionaire. He's, he's got a series on Amazon that's very successful. He's 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 directing films. He's 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 starring in films. Good it's point. Fine. Most people usually just decide they've got enough money and don't want more. <laughs> I know somebody who did. I do too, but that's not the typical route. <laughs> <You're now. Yeah. laughs> Mr. McAfee, you silly bitch. I think Kyle was talking about me. Yeah, that's about Woody. <laughs> Mr. McAfee would love to have his $94 million back. That's why he's so fucking crazy. Well, he didn't shout anything out. He shouted many things out. Okay. <laughs> he did no, no business interests. No, nothing like that. <laughs> Don't no follow me on Twitter here. No, sure uh, he did. He was talking about homemade antibiotics, bath salts, <laughs> and rum. But those were the only things he was concerned with the whole time. And then it went to a dark place with that dog talk. Mm. He was like, "Who? Nobody who owns a dog would kill a dog." And I'm thinking, "Well, I mean, I've killed a few. <laughs> 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 yeah. Who's to cast stones? Here, but... <laughs> just, yeah, you're living in a glass house with that. So. Yeah." Mm. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I see of both minds. Yeah, the fact that he parlayed it into a, a, behind a paywall so quickly. Here's the thing. The okay. people who have a problem with it, they weren't watching the show anywhere. That's not that's always the case. It's it always the case. That's what it always, always is. You're so that's right. That's how it always is. Like the people who like have been watching that show and like John and like his show, they hear it's going to CBS and they're like, sweet. Now everybody will get to watch it. They won't have to just tune in to some little internet broadcast. The people who are who are having a problem, they weren't watching the show to begin with. They won't watch it now. They just don't like it that somebody's making some money somewhere. Yeah. There is probably a couple I could have that. made a show about good stuff happening if I was a six foot three handsome movie star with one of the greatest sitcoms if i was also on on the office (laughs) for 10 years yeah and you're right you're right about that it's mostly people bitching as per usual that don't even watch but can how how are you entertained by a show that's only about good news you know why the media always brings up shit that's bad news it bleeds it leads because that's yeah if it bleeds it leads that's what you want you don't want to talk about you know, p- uh, puppies being saved from a fire more than once every 45 minutes. You know, you'll like the season uh, of The Wire when they follow the newspaper. That's coming. Ah, uh, well, instead, more great. Instead of the docs, it's the newspaper. What uh, season is that? Five. Uh, Are they going to ever go back to just do, being cops? The start of yes. four might be the, what you want. I'm old. I, I'm old, my memory's my memory's foggy, and I'm only on like season four is one the this school time system. around. Okay. Schools. So also, the political race, the mayoral campaign. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, those go kind of hand in hand. I wonder who runs for mayor. Is it the that black police? Nobody company? you know yet. Nobody you know yet. Okay. And it's also oh, several people. Somebody you know, but nobody you know yet from this show. That's not what a spoiler. It's Littlefinger. Really? Yeah. Does he still have trouble nailing an accent down in this show? He's got a pretty good Baltimore accent. He's got a good Baltimore accent. Okay. Baltimore. Baltimore. I mean, speaking of people with good accents, do you know what Jimmy McNulty really sounds like? Is he no, British? He's, British he's fucking British, dude. There's an episode where he bad. does a British accent poorly. What? There's an episode where Jimmy McNulty, with his Baltimore accent, attempts a British accent to get in with the into that underground whorehouse that's being financed by the Greeks. And he's faking a British accent with a Baltimore accent. It's like accent inception, and he's masterful at it. It seems very difficult. The, it um, seems incredibly difficult. The guy from House, whenever I see him speak with a British accent, I'm like, what? Uh, Lou? Lowry. La- is that his name? Anyway, uh, I think that guy's British. And he is. You wouldn't, like, as an American, I thought he was American. Part yeah. of me feels lied to. A lot of Australians are really good at, at nailing uh, American accents, I've noticed. And vice versa. I feel is he like Australian they're Australian or British? He's British. Okay. But okay. I, I'm just saying in general, like like um, Lucy Lawless, I don't know. I'm pretty sure she's Australian and she and she nails an American accent. <sighs> uh, Keith Urban, Carl Urban. Taylor. Both of them are. The, so Trump tweeted out Not Carl Urban. 
something about mail-in ballots being ripe for abuse and that they were sending them to everyone in California, even if they're not registered to vote. And then Twitter fact-checked it. And uh, somehow the Parabroto community, they hate fact-checking. <laughs> and uh, But like I guess the right in general always fusses. They feel like the fact-checkers are biased. What's your take on it? Is it okay to fact-check uh, the president? I, I haven't followed the oh, mail-in ballot thing. I really I don't know what what the big to do. I, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Maybe there is fraud going on with it. Maybe not. I, don't, I, I have no fucking idea. Uh, but yeah, they I'll talk about you, it. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to add editorial onto things. So like, isn't that the kind of thing where it's like social media sites have to agree that they're, they're either purveyors or publishers of content. There's some sort of line there. Maybe, maybe you can clarify for me more. Yeah. So I, here's the thing, right? AT&T is never held responsible for our phone conversation, right? Yeah. Everyone agrees AT&T is not like a, a newspaper, a publisher, what, what have you. That's us. All they do is provide the line. So but sometimes think about sites they like... Commentary and removed right. supplemented stuff you said, then so they let would me, be... Let me get right? there, yeah. But, you know, on, on the opposite of the spectrum is something like a newspaper who creates all their content. And somewhere in the middle, hard to get perfect, are sites like Reddit, or Twitter, or Facebook, where, you know, like, oh, I'm the one doing the talking on Facebook, yeah. but somehow, or, or do, buying an ad on Facebook, but somehow Facebook is also held responsible for misinformation and, and in a way that we don't hold. So they're in between a newspaper and a telephone line, and they, no one, they, they, they can't seem to do it in a way that everyone agrees is a good job. So Twitter, Twitter has a policy that says like, if you try to mislead me about voting, like if you tell me that the, we're doing voting on Thursday this year, Twitter will fact check it now and say, no, 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 no. You're trying to get Woody to miss uh, the election by two days by telling him it's Thursday. It's actually Tuesday, right? So that's a thing. Trump went out. Like that. Yeah, I, that, that's, you, that is a lot of power you're giving to someone who runs a company that basically controls the current method by which we communicate with each other. You know, like you can't be having companies like Facebook and Twitter jumping in and being, and, and in a lot of these, you know, they're going to be editorializing because people have their own opinions, their own thoughts. And so like, no, that's, this is a, this that's, is a slippery yeah. slope to it's head down. So that's risky. It is a slippery slope. I agree. Um, but I picked that one cause I thought it was on firm footing. The whole like Taylor, November 5th, Thursday, don't forget to vote when it's really November 3rd, Tuesday. Like, that's an area where I thought we'd all agree, like, oh, well, you don't want, like, people doing campaigns of tricky, maybe targeting black people, yeah. for example, and giving them the wrong date. You push that out enough, and people will miss the vote date. They'll get it wrong. Yeah, like, you, it, it's the whole you give a mouse a cookie thing. Like you can't give these companies like Facebook, Twitter that have their own vested interests and alliances and relationships with people on Capitol Hill and whatnot. Like you can't give them that sort of carte blanche to to editorialize and add and remove shit wherever they want. That's that's risky. Okay. I, I don't know all the details and everything, but yeah, I, I'm definitely always in favor of more more free speech. Okay, like, right. more you know speech. It's less fact checking, really. You know, they're like they're not removing anybody's tweets. It's not their place to fact check. And if you don't think they'll be removing people's tweets before too long, they will. And they already do by suspending certain accounts and and getting okay. rid of people. So like, yeah, I, I'm I'm very. And it's not just Twitter. It's like all of these sites and these basically technocracy companies that control the way the, you know, the the free square is now of speaking. That's risky. So risky the current point. event is this: Trump tweeted out. It really breaks down to two things. One I, I'm okay with and one I'm not. He said, mail-in voting is really susceptible to fraud and thievery and trickery. He also said, everyone's going to get a ballot even if they're not registered to vote. Now, the second part, in my mind, is clear-cut. Not to you, it would seem. But in my mind, it's like, ooh, he's going to convince people they don't need to register to vote. I find that to be uncool, right? You shouldn't lie about the voting process <laughs> and stuff. The part about mail-in voting being susceptible to fraud, I actually, I'm, I'm on the same team there. It makes sense that it would and be, it, right? Like a lot less security. So here in North Carolina, that happened. It happened in 2018, our last election, House of Representatives, right? Not some little bullshit, you know, mm -hmm. like school district assistant. Federal representative, House of Congress. Uh, the Republicans did it, but it could have been either side. Uh, it, it could be either side. They, um, 
they took thousands of ballots from one county and threw them away. And, uh, and because of that, they declared the election to be invalid when really the Democrats should have won. Like, it, you know, you can statistically predict how the absentee ballots place co- would come out based on all the other ones. But uh, it's like the Republicans won absentee ballots by 92%. That's weird. But if you were to guess they were like all the other votes, then the Democrats would have won. And uh, mm-hmm. so that election became invalid. They held like a midterm 2019 or something, and the Republicans won that. And it's like, huh, it worked. It worked. Now, it kind of did work in, in that people are in jail now because of it. Like, it's not a conspiracy theory. It worked that well, then. <laughs> yeah, like, it, like they, they found out who, where the money went, who the actors were, and the people who did the physical part and were behind it are in prison. So my, my, my big thing is I think it's really short sighted and foolish to give companies like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google. YouTube, Reddit, who are Google, who are if, if it's 2020 and you haven't figured out how incestuous these companies are with people on Capitol Hill and with these politicians and whatnot, like, come on, get with it. Like these these people have vested interests in certain things. And if you don't think they're going to use every bit of power they have to get that and whether it means manipulating information or cutting things off or stifling people, shadow banning, whatever. It's just, it's bad news. It's bad news. I I don't know enough about the, the voting thing to really weigh in. I don't know how fraudulent mail-in voting is, but yeah, it's, it's not a good idea to give those companies this power. It can be. So on the voting thing to to shift into the topic, it, I'm of two minds on one hand. uh, I feel like the Republicans always work to have lower voter turnout. Right, they they want to shorten the amount of time that you can vote. Like, if the Democrats were in charge, you get a whole fucking voting. Oh, oh definitely. Like, Republicans yeah. want to slow it down, and Democrats want to do like, hey, you don't even need ID. You can anyone yeah. can vote. Just walk on in, even if you're not technically a citizen. Let, let me keep going. So yeah, yeah. yeah, so the Democrats are always like, more votes are better because they do better under big turnout. And the Republicans are always, you know, tightening it down, usually under the guise of fraud. But there, there really isn't any fraud. Trump came in, said they were going to get, they found like actually you zero said there was fraud, fraud though. on the mail-in voting thing. Okay, so that's fair. Touche. Um, uh, but uh, I guess I was talking about people who weren't supposed to vote, not stolen votes. But anyway. Um, uh, oh, so that's the thing. Now, Democrats want to make voting easier by doing this mail-in thing. But I don't know that I agree with the Democrats on this one because is the rationale we just had like fraud. A, a Corona thing Yes, where it's like, okay. But I don't know that, that okay. Sense. Well, like, topically but, to me. You know, now here's know. Conspiracy Woody saying, you're using Corona to get something you've always wanted. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, I don't know. Uh, I find it really fascinating. I like to watch the chess of it. Now, now the Democrats are using Corona to make voting more convenient, which is always in the Democrats' favor. And the Republicans are, in this case, I think legitimately challenging the fraud, the potential fraud. And uh, that's where it is. You know, it, it's... Uh, so I thought, I don't know. I, I wanted to hear your take on it because I, I expected you to be on the other side of it where you'd say Twitter, Facebook, all the Googles, they shouldn't be fact checking they shouldn't be inserting their two cents i I firmly stand by that like you cannot allow these giant tech companies to be the arbiter of speech that's really fucking risky especially when what if the person who decides to fact check decides that's a little lie but i like that lie that's a good lie that helps what i want and and if people don't think that's going to happen you're a fucking retard like obviously that will happen and you're kind of winning me over these powers can have precedence right so sometimes i think like all right let's say let's say you love trump right and now you grant trump this power trump can decide who's allowed to leave their front door or not right with this corona thing it's incredibly trump's uh power beginning to end that might be cool but remember, someday you'll hate your president. Someday it's going to be the equivalent of Hillary. Not actually Hillary, but work with me. And yeah, she'd you'll, never win. <laughs> you'll regret that you gave that power to the president when you liked him. So, exactly. And, and exactly. that's where I am. Like, even if right now I don't feel like Twitter and Google have bad intent, you want to give them that power, right? You know, because someday you, you, they will. Basically, the way I would put it, do you ever want to say something to the left of Nancy Pelosi or to the right of Marco Rubio? If no, then awesome. Have these companies control speech. Have them control it because you're going to be sandwiched between 
a couple of milk toast opinions that you're allowed to have, and that'll be it. Right. And it's going to happen either slowly or very quickly. Who knows? But it's going to happen. Jack Dorsey. That's the guy's name in charge of Twitter right now, right? Yeah. 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 It, not you, but the listener might politically agree with Dorsey and think that it's okay to give him that power. But just wait. Someday there'll be a different guy with that job or something other than Twitter who's able to leverage this precedent. Yeah. And you'll be unhappy that now they're the arbiter of truth. I'm very sensitive to any kind of what feels like encroachment or manipulation of our ability to speak freely. <sighs> and you have to look at the internet as the online public square. That's what it is now. That's where, especially with shit like Corona, if you can't speak your mind on the internet, talking about politics, what have you, like where, where can you speak? It's, it's I, very bad news. I don't have an answer because I, what I want is for everyone to know the truth and then debate on how to make our real reality better. What I don't want is for everyone to get bamboozled by bad actors, and then you know we don't even deal with the same reality that we're trying to improve. The problem is, I don't know how to get truth out there, and you're winning me over that having Twitter and Facebook do it for us is probably a bad plan. Yeah, yeah. Did, well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it seems yeah. like a terrible idea to me these boards are constantly changing. The investors are constantly changing and they're very influential people who are part of, you know, I just need a good plan. I don't think it's having the government regulate it. That's no. a scary plan. And then like, you say, Oh, the free market will, will decide who says <laughs> and I, I used to be more on that team. And over time it was like, Oh wait, this doesn't fucking work at all because companies like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Google are no longer that incentivized by profit margins because they know there's no one who's coming on their tails. Bing. You think Bing is scaring Google? You think DuckDuckGo is scaring Google or YouTube? Of course not. I they only use Ask Jeeves. Solidified... <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Ask before it died, I think, right? Ask. It was. It was. Yeah, I like when it was Ask Jeeves and it had that old-timey butler. That was the best part of Ask Jeeves, is thinking about like, oh, this guy's going to answer about my potentially uh, chlamydia I have, but in a classy way. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I'm Googling symptoms and things. So I, mm -hmm. I, I did like that about Ask Jeeves. Google doesn't give you any any flair anymore. All they'll do is like have a celebratory Google doodle about someone who died in 1802 and basically did nothing. It's like, hey, this guy fucking, <laughs> he invented <laughs> artificial banana flavoring. <laughs> how's, how's that? I never use the Google homepage anymore. It used to be the Google homepage was kind of celebrated for how simple it was. Now I use my URL bar and I have for so long I don't even see the doodles. Yeah. 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 I don't really follow either. Oh, St. Paul is trending. Are there more riots? More riots in the Twin Cities? <laughs> yes, apparently. I, yes. It, My goodness. I who who loots a vitamin store? You know, I always find the targets to like can we just agree the targets don't make sense? They're targeting whatever's convenient. They're not trying to make a statement by taking out AutoZone. Oh, of course oh. not. Of course not. Like, that's the way but it is. But, like, I, I do who, see this. Who is like, and you just know the employee of the vitamin shop, S H O P P E, the day before this was like, no one's going to come here. <laughs> 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 now, now they're getting all their fucking B vitamins and fish oil stolen. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, in Ferguson, I think it was Ferguson, they mm. burnt down a wig and hairdresser shop, maybe, that sort of specialized for black women. Yeah. And everyone was like, why would you take out that store? That's like, I, I, this, your people? Does that sound racist? I don't know how to not to sound it. But they, you're, that's your own community you're taking out. <laughs> the owners were, were black women. Like, like you know, they, and they took out the black you wig. <laughs> they took out the black wig <laughs> hairdresser place. Like, why, why, why? And it's because they're not a thinking mob. You know, it's they're just, they're just a uh, impulsive, wrecking stuff nearby, angry at the world mob. Not really. Yeah. They, they, it wasn't I mean, personal. I, I remember... I, I think I even told this on the show uh, when the Ferguson thing was going down. A very good friend of mine, Carter. I know you listen to the show, Carter. Shout out. Hmm. Uh, he was like, I'm working. At, he was texting me at the time. He's like, I work at Ferguson and this whole thing is getting out of hand. He went to work the next day and he was like, I came to work in my insurance agency, whatever the fuck it was. And I was expecting pretty much everybody to be there. 
I was the only one. I showed up <laughs> like a, a, a door that I had to call my boss and that I could unlock with the passcode or whatever. And you know what there is to eat in Ferguson near me? McDonald's. And you know what happened to that McDonald's? They burned it down. <laughs> and so I have nothing to eat here. And that, he literally quit that job right after Ferguson and moved to Chicago because he was like, this sucks. This oh, is, this is well, at least you got away from those people. <laughs> and, and nonsense in, in Ferguson. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm out of here. I'm going to Atlanta. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm amused that St. Louis is like, really? Not here? Usually it's we usually get something You're like, are we just going to sit through this whole thing and not participate? It's going to happen. It's going to, <laughs> we we're we're a plus better business bureau rated for rioting. <laughs> <laughs> St. Louis will pop off at some point and it'll probably be the East side that does it first. We watched that clip of new years in East St. Louis where it was just firing high powered rifles into the air. With no concern. There's like cops driving by at some point, and even the cops know, like, mm -hmm, this isn't our fight. Like, it's just to keep on fucking rolling. So. I, yeah, I remember we watched that, and I I learned about shooting guns into the air. Like, So my, I was wrong. I thought shooting a gun up straight was okay, and shooting a gun almost straight up was almost as good. It turns out that you have to really shoot straight up. Otherwise, it lands hard and fast. If you shoot straight up, it doesn't land hard enough. Right. It's kind of like just dropping it off your roof. Because there's no difference between shooting one a bullet straight up and dropping it from very high. Oh. Yeah. But that makes that makes a ton of sense. I'm and, like a So let's say ninety degrees is straight up. I thought eighty was pretty good. It is not. Eighty is shooting someone who's far. That's what eighty is. It lands and zoom. I and these gentlemen were not being careful about the yes, I, that, that's where I was headed. They were they were, <laughs> well, they were just randomly shooting towards the sky, <laughs> and, you know, and uh, I promise you, they were actually shooting things far away, not oh, dropping. I, I, I watched this. Uh, I, I was doing this is probably a couple weeks ago at this point, but uh, Taylor Merka on Twitch, we were doing a just chatting, hanging out, watching stuff stream, and it was like deep. It was some guy named uh, Guns and something else, and he like goes and, and experiments and not experiments, but he experiences other ways of life, like in Russia, oh. rural areas. And he basically went into this shithole area that looked like a paintball course. And everybody in the chat's like, oh, this is the grossest thing ever. This is awful. And I was like, oh, it's not nearly as bad as East St. Louis. And so I <laughs> pulled up a video of that and they're like, oh my God, this is in America. <laughs> <laughs> Our country. And it, it looks like this. Yeah, it's, it's just awful. It, it, it's sad what's happened to so many cities that were booming 60, 70 years ago when you think about it. Do they have? Like Detroit, Paris of the West, they used to call it. Really? Truly. They truly no. <laughs> Literally look up Paris of the West and you will see it's Detroit. When did they call it that? I'm not going to do that. That's a trap, Taylor. I'm not Googling fucking shit. When did they call it the Paris of the West? <laughs> what year was that? It was the year... There's 18? no way to know, Kyle. There's no way to know. <laughs> I'm willing to wait. I think it begins with the... I like that Taylor's I, I, our fact if, checker if, now. If I had to guess, it would be like 1946 or something when they were booming with the automobile stuff. Mm. I'm going to go anyway, with covered wagons. When they made a lot of horse glue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I oh, but yeah, yeah, how did I get start fact checking now? <laughs> I did. Woody seamlessly passes that off. <laughs> the show needs it, but they give me too much shit. So. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, um, yeah, does St. Louis have a lot of just like empty grass lots where there were vacant houses? Do they knock it down? And uh, East St. Louis does. St. Louis proper, not as much. But yeah, okay. East St. Louis on the Illinois side, lots yeah. of lots of that. that haven't been mowed in, you know, Ooh. as Kyle would say, a coon's age. They should... So very long grass. Yeah, it, it apparently, if you have an empty house, that quickly becomes a drug den or a place where homeless people squat or like, you know, it's a real attra a magnet for unattractive behavior. But if you have an empty lot, then that's yeah, preferable. Yeah. yeah. So you got this house in East St. Louis. Better snatch this up, Taylor. Zillow, $12,000, two Taylor, bed, two bed. Taylor, 
Taylor, I'll go in halvesies with you. Do you know what area this is? <laughs> the fact that it's a $12,000 home, Taylor, I can only imagine. If you open up the link, you can see Martin Luther King Drive from the map. Not Dude. to mention you're right by fucking North 16th and Missouri Ave. Yeah, Dude, this is an investment, Taylor. <laughs> It comes with a satellite dish. I mean, pretty cool place. You know what? That would be a pretty fun. Already dish. mounted. Let's buy a house together and <laughs> see, for six grand a pop and see what we can turn it into. In Cheers that's handle the closing cost. In yeah. Detroit, it's built in 1900. That has to be a mistake. Uh, in Detroit, they don't let you buy houses like this. Like a lot of people were just buying homes they had no intention of doing anything with, hoping that Detroit would turn around. And now they like you have to prove that you want to live there and turn it into a home. Looking at these pictures, I can smell this house. <laughs> absolutely rancid. You know what this smells? It has a damp smell. You know it does. It smells like black. Mold. Look at the payment. Look at the estimated payment. Seventy three dollars a month. This house $8 price per square foot. This house is a notable upgrade from where my father was raised. He would wow. have, he had, it was about this size and like what it hit me when Kyle said he can smell it. This is, this is, yeah, I can smell it. I can smell the front yard. I can smell the grass. Like I, I know the neighborhood. I bet I, I can hear the bar across the street and, um, but his house wasn't, um, didn't have a yard like this. It was all of them touching each other. They're like, row dude, houses. this one's much better for 12,000. Little benefits of East St. Louis. They have some of the mm. country's most renowned full nudity strip clubs. Mm. Full nudity? And do they serve alcohol? Oh, they do. They, they serve alcohol. That is the, wasted. Yeah. That's the lowest standard. Like there's titty bars and they tend to serve alcohol. There's full nudity bars, but they don't have alcohol. St. Louis has combined the two. St. Louis? <laughs> well, because... Un Fucking weird. The two major cities in Missouri are in three states collectively, where it's St. Louis, Missouri, St. Louis, Illinois, and then Kansas City, Missouri, and then a little bit of Kansas City, Kansas. But you want you want pot now? Drive over the bridge. Go to Illinois. You want drive through liquor, guns, and ammunition? Drive on over to the Missouri side. We got you covered. And so a nice, you know, this is what multiculturalism <laughs> means to be. You know. Drive through, or no, it's not. It's drive through liquor, guns, and fireworks is what it is. Missouri has That's all a these good things? combination. <laughs> <laughs> is it like a barn that you literally drive through the middle of the store, or is it like a drive through window, like a fast food restaurant? Drive through window. You like okay. go on the side that looks like a barn, and then you say, I want, you know, two boxes of 22, a handle of Papa vodka, and a bunch of M80s. And they're like, <laughs> you know, M80s are illegal, right? And it's like, <laughs> here's your sparklers <laughs> um, yeah. in kentucky they have the drive through liquor stores north carolina drive right through the middle of that motherfucker that's cool You're, yeah it like, is cool stuff. but they hand you the alcohol right yeah i mean you can get out but you don't need to what are you what are you doing you got to start drinking with all those rules around you <laughs> take advantage yeah, you're right, Kyle. This second one is much, much better, but it's still awful. It's still awful. It's a $12,000 home. Like, How many months do you think you and I could pay uh, $36.50 each before we're killed if we were to <laughs> live here? Are you seriously dollars. talking about financing this motherfucker? <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah, we wouldn't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting a mortgage on a twelve thousand dollar house. We finance a twelve thousand dollar. I wouldn't make money. Like, <laughs> and it's six. It's six. <laughs> finance a twelve thousand. dollars I have six thousand dollars, not to brag. <laughs> you know, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I also have. I'm I'm well over six grand liquid, so I can. All I can right. Pop in there. Well, I mean, I'm, I need to move a, thing, few, move a few things around. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I, you know, <laughs> I get an extension on my taxes. And I, <laughs> yeah, man, this house is ugly as shit, dude. Looks awful. Yeah, it is. Now, if there was a $12,000 house like that in Colorado, then would then you'd chip in. 
You'd have to tear this up and just destroy it. <laughs> you would. Yeah. I'm Look at see. how much mold there is on these walls. Oh. It's visible. la di -da. Yeah. I, I think that's moss. <laughs> <laughs> it, it might be moss. Uh, oh, look at the outside. Oh, God, that looks all... They, someone chopped a tree down and just left it. Is it in St. <laughs> Louis? <laughs> they might have just fallen down on the fence and he hasn't gotten to yeah. it. And you're being kind of judgy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, little, a little deep cut there. <laughs> so I'm looking at, like, Colorado. I searched the entire state of Colorado and I made my maximum price $12,000. It's just plots of land. But... Several acres. You can get five acres in Blanco, Colorado, four thousand dollars. For a thousand or four thousand? Four big ones. Oh, I'm out. Five acres. Okay. I can't. I can't handle four big ones. I mean, we could all chip in here, have ourselves a piece of land out in the Sunshine State, Florida. No, Colorado. It's a dumb and dumber joke. It's, it's, it's oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm like <laughs> it's, the, the, Lloyd, the, Jim Carrey's character is picking up uh, Jamie Presley or whatever her name is, and she, he's like, "Where are you heading?" She's she's like, uh, "Colorado." Or he's like, "Ah, the Sunshine State." And she's just like, ah. "I love that movie." <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I don't know if we want to go here. The I was looking up the violent crime rate again. East St. Louis is blowing. Guatemala and Nicaragua out of the <laughs> over here. You got to go to Caracas, Venezuela before you get anything even close. <laughs> Property crime? Oh my God. We're going to lose our cars night one. <laughs> oh, the, I didn't think of the cars. Yeah, definitely the cars. I was thinking of like, the home. Like, nobody's going to fuck with that place. I mean, Clearly, they already have. They're not coming back. You can't steal property, Taylor. It goes all the way to the middle <laughs> of the earth, you goof. You can't, <laughs> you can't steal property. <laughs> you can't steal property. It doesn't belong to anyone. Mm. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, that's what you think, bitch. We showed you. <laughs> it does belong to us now. Stupid Native Americans. I like how you made the stupid comment politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, stupid set Native Americans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Native American. I hate that. I hate that we call them Native Americans. I'm a Native American. You're I mean, a Native American. We literally American. are Native Americans. We, yes. we were born in America and we grew up here. Yes. That's how I got my first five jobs. Yeah. <laughs> you and Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sir, your name's Taylor. We're not buying this. My name is Chief Getting Job. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh man, I can. I, oh, speaking of the Native American accent, mm. I've been playing Red Dead Redemption Two on mm. stream. Oh, I've probably played for like 10, 11, 12 hours total now. This game is awesome. I told you. It is so fun pretending to be a cowboy. It's really in depth, and there's so much to do that it's kind of. Did it open too slow? I've heard that criticism. It did open really slow. Uh, it, but I interact with my chat so much, and like I'm joking around with them. It goes so fast. Like it, it didn't bother me. But yeah, this game is sick. So much fun. And it it's so in depth, it's almost bothersome. Where it's like, I'll be trying to chase someone in the chat. It's like, you got to feed your horse. <laughs> it's like, oh. Are you fucking kidding me? It's <laughs> nice when your chat's helpful. And like you said, uh, sometimes down moments in games are a good time mm -hmm. to talk to the chat. So like what might be boring gameplay can be a better show. Exactly. Whereas yeah, if, and so I don't mind that at all. If the game requires your full attention, then the chat's not getting any of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Doom was harder because of that because so many scenes in Doom, it's like, are you ready, bitch? Here's hard rock and death. And it's like, <laughs> I would realize I'm playing it and it's like, I haven't talked in four minutes. I'm just stressed. I'm just yeah. anxious about, you know, chainsawing enough guys. To it's, keep a my game. it's a great fucking game. Did you ever beat game. it? I it. No, 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 I got maybe a third of the way through. The The final boss is kind of lame, but everything up until that is great. I'll need to check that out. So you played Red Dead 2? Uh, I'm, I know a lot about it. I've watched videos of it. I've watched people stream it. I, it's made by Rockstar, I believe. So, it, mm -hmm. it, you know, they, they sort of borrow a lot from um, from the GTA series with the 
how in depth it is and all, and all that shit. I've watched I a lot of videos, up but I'm early in that game because I was thinking Rockstar, it's like GTA. And I just finished GTA 5 where I can kill hundreds of cops and people and then pay like $65 and be fine. Yeah. I had no idea that behaving like an asshole in the beginning of this game, there are law dogs waiting for me at every corner in the woods and they are way better with their guns than I am. Yep. And so I'm, I'm getting very aggravated. Like I'll be in the middle of any mission and then you hop on a bridge and suddenly there's, you know, 15 sheriffs on the other side, just butt fucking you. So I need to, I need to save up enough to pay off my bounty in the main area, which is three hundred dollars. Which in this game might as well be one point five million <laughs> in Grand Theft Auto. That's because how Skyrim. That's how Skyrim could be. You know, you'd uh, you'd go on a little rampage, and then they'd arrest you, and then you're like, ah, you could pay this much money to be an incredible sum, mm-hmm. or you can go to jail, and then you get. I don't know if you. Did you I don't know if you ever played it, but like you go oh, to I jail. A lot of Skyrim, yeah. Uh, you have that one opportunity to pick the lock. You have one lock pick. I guess you butthold in. And if you break <laughs> that, if you break that, then you literally have to watch the days pass for like dozens and dozens of days sometimes, depending on how bad of a boy you were. Yeah. I wish but you can also another... just like get up and pee. Not that big a deal in Skyrim. At least I haven't been taken to jail yet in Red Dead Redemption 2. Or no, I have been, but it didn't work that way. I didn't have mm-hmm. to wait that long. So. I saw an ad for um, an Elder Scrolls online game. I don't know what that is, though. Like, like is that is there going to be like a full story? Oh, that's story? been out for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elder Scrolls I guess online. maybe it's an expansion for it or something, because like there was like a, it was like a, I usually, I skip almost every YouTube ad, but I was watching YouTube on my television, and um, it was like a three and a half, four minute ad, but it looked cool as shit, so I just watched the whole thing, and it's like, a bunch of like, you know, a guy with a big Viking helmet and some enormous blonde bitch and mm-hmm. like eight other like just regular sh- sh- sword and shield guys like rappel down into this vampire cave and discover this like hidden city, fight a shitload of werewolves, and then they face off against like a vampire lord. That sounds and tight. Was, yeah, it looked awesome. It looked like a Lord of the Rings type scenario and it looked great. And I'm watching, I'm like, please be this like a whole new Elder Skyrim 2 or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck, you know, another Elder. But it said Elder Scrolls Online or something like that. I don't even know what the deal is with that. Like, like- I, I tried Elder Scrolls Online. It's been out for a few, or maybe I'm mistaking it for something else. But I, I definitely tried that at some point, and I lost interest almost immediately. Like with a game like Skyrim or GTA or Red Dead Redemption Two, like I want to be the guy in that universe. Everybody else is an NPC. I'm the maniac doing my thing. I don't want a bunch of other maniacs doing their thing. That's I not could- fun. So they were trying to do this thing, um, and there's there was a subreddit for it called Skyrim Together, uh, where they were trying to like code Skyrim for co-op, and I think it turned into like a money laundering scheme or something, where they took tons <laughs> and tons of money from like the public because everybody was like, yeah, that sounds incredible, and like these guys who were developing it just kept all the money and maybe just never even did it. So I don't even, I don't I don't know, okay. but um, that would be cool, just co-op, just like co-op Skyrim or co-op um, Fallout, but like. I've been told Fallout 76 has been improved a lot. Have you ever played a Fallout game? I played a little bit of Fallout New Vegas and it didn't suck me in. I didn't get very interested. Man, that's the I, that's that's my favorite probably my favorite game series. Probably definitely my favorite RPG. You know, I've played I played all of Oblivion, all of Skyrim. Um I played Fable and I played a bunch of other shit. I love Fallout. I love the like the the backstory of that, the whole mythos you know, the, the vault tech company and, and, and everything they were up to all that sneaky shit. Mm-hmm. And I love the gameplay in new Vegas. It's miles ahead of the gameplay of uh, fallout three where they, they added like the first person shooter aiming and stuff. And I, I like the perk system. I like the whole, does thing. it hold up sometimes great games from 12 years ago, you replay them and you're like, eh. I played it about two years ago and I modded the fuck out of it. And it was a ball. It was okay. so fun. Uh, I really loved it. Uh, It was around the time Fallout 4 came out. Um, So maybe a little more than two years, you know, time flies. But uh, I I played Fallout 4 like vanilla. Then I played Fallout 4 all the way through, like modded to hell and back with like, I I think I've still got maybe the screenshots of my my character somewhere with giant titties. Nice. (laughs) You know, a game I... You know, I've been wanting to pal around with a little bit that I never have is the um, the Bioshock series. 
Everybody says those are awesome. And those I've are awesome. And so, okay, yeah. well, shit, dude, that's a whole story. Like, like, if you're gonna get into that, like, don't even watch any videos. First of all, it's great. It's a really good story. It's a really good, um, like, universe to be in with, mm -hmm. like, like, it's sort of an alternate universe type thing. Uh, you're in an undersea city that you discover. I'll kind of leave it at that. And uh, there's three of them, and they're great. They're legitimately amazing games. Yeah, third one in the sky, I think. <clears throat> third one sucks. People third said it's sucks. good. I haven't played the third one. It got, I think Kyle's in the minority opinion. So start with one, basically. I don't think yeah. I am. Um, the third one's awful. What? It's, no. I... It... Did you like it, Woody? I bought it and didn't play it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the third one's awful. So the it's first, game, yeah. the first two are like really well linked, and uh, you know they're under the sea in the city of Rapture, and then the third one just goes off the rails with all this like alternate reality timeline, uh, time travel bullshit. And it was promote. It, it it was a completely different game than what was promoted. They they really promoted this like. Oh, you're gonna be flying on hooks in the sky all the time and doing all this crazy shit. And it's like, no, that's just kind of like the cutscene mechanic. Just for the and, record, it got ten out of ten on Steam, four out of four and a half out of five on GameStop, and on Google, ninety-five percent like ratio. I believe they pay for those ratings. All I know is it is the worst <laughs> of the Fallout games. But everyone <laughs> loved it. it. Like it, what, it was, what did Game Informer give it? Ten it, out of a ten. So I they pay for those ratings. When I, it dropped, I, I think oh, when it I think I was like neck deep in the in my Minecraft world, and that's why I didn't play it. But mm -hmm. I was very excited about it. And just what I remember is like everyone playing it, everyone in like my universe was loving that game. And I don't know, I feel yeah. like I found a lot of data to back up that opinion. I played it. Not a good, not the worst of them for sure. I'm not saying it's a terrible game, mm -hmm. but it fell short of the first two big time. Like, like if like Halo one, two, and three are all excellent. Each one is better than the last. Um, Gears, Gears one, two, and three, excellent. St story's great. You feel for the characters. They got better every step of the way. You know, I'm, I'm aware that with Halo and Gears, they kept making. Is that a very more. hard campaign as far as campaigns go? Gears? Or am I something else? Yeah, Gears. If you play it on hard, it, well, any of those games if you play on the hardest difficulty is quite hard. Gears is a little more challenging because um, there's a. No, I'm thinking of Dark Souls. Dark Souls is the one people are yeah. like. Dark oh, Souls this is, is a very difficult hard. game that I don't fuck with. Yeah, it it looks too difficult to enjoy. Um, Apparently, when you die in it, you lose so much progress that it's like a brutal experience. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't want that. <laughs> I like I like dying, and starting two seconds before i died mm -hmm. really? <laughs> i don't mind a little bit of punishment Red Dead redemption have you considered was, the lego I, games taylor because <laughs> they do this i was i was considering or i was doing a uh, red dead redemption and i accidentally parked my uh my Your wagon on the <laughs> on the railroad and i was oh, chasing yeah. someone way far away who parks on the I train tracks taylor and I, and I logged it. Everybody's like, get back, get back there. And I was like, it's fine. It's a game. And then I see the, oh, oh, oh. And then I ended up dying because they, they killed my horses because I, I left them on the train track. Uh, I deserve that one. But they only teleported me back like two minutes of game time. Not too bad. Hmm. If they would have teleported me back 20 minutes or something, if I wasn't streaming the game, that would be enough for me to be like, fuck it. No. No, I'm not replaying 20, 30 minutes of gameplay to get back to that. Yeah. So I, I, I prefer they keep you real close to what you're supposed to be doing. It's a, it's a, I guess Dark Souls, the gameplay is really tough and the death is really brutal. And I think Wings of Redemption's good at it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt he is. I mean, that that's one of those games where like you you get timing down, right? Where it's like, this is where I step out here so I can shoot this one guy with a bow and then I step back right. and I know that because I've died 10 times here and then you step out again and then you pop, dodge I, again. Like That's that my impression awful. of it. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and, all right, I just need to hit him 37 times before he hits me twice. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I've never played it. I've watched a little bit of it, and it, it does look difficult. I've seen the speed run, the world record speed run, and that's just absurd. It's like, what what are you doing with your life? You, it's like they're not even playing the same game. <laughs> no, they're, you're not. Like, he beat a game that takes people, like, a dozen hours and five minutes or something. Like, he's jumping, like, over maps and, and, through, and through the sky and finding all these weird glitches to, like, get through the... I, I'm exaggerating with five minutes, but it was quick. It was, like a 20th of what it should have taken him or something. It was crazy fast. I, I like to watch portal speed runs. Now the first portal in particular, I've, I, I like that game and I've played through it. Call it 25 times. Like, like I know that game really well and I watched them speed run it. And I'm like, that's not even the solution the makers had in mind. You know, like <laughs> you can see there while you're falling and they put a portal in some weird spot and skip the whole puzzle. That's what they. It's all about like skipping puzzles and doing weird things. And yeah, I, I played through that not too long ago. Uh, me and uh, my friend class beat. Uh, I guess it was Portal Two because it's the co-op. It's the one. co-op one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Portal it Two. Got, was it like, it, it got all tedious at the end. By the end, I was just like, "You want to do this one? You want to do this puzzle? I'll just sit here and you do the thing, and then I'll jump in." It was just like it was getting old. I did it with Chiz actually on a live stream. Uh, it was a good experience. She's smart, good at puzzles. We did it together. Yeah, people rave about that game being incredible. It's really fun. I'd be, I'd played it before. I was just bored by the end. Like, like, like we beat it in one session. So, like, yeah, I, was I don't just, remember I was being ready to be able done. to let one person leave. I, I felt like they were like the nature of the puzzles was that you had to do something while I was doing this, and it took two people to solve. There it. are there's some puzzles though that like one guy needs to like go out there. I need to wait till he and then he sets up a whole thing thing. and then he pushes a a cube through it and then the cube's going to come back to me and I'm just going to sit it on a lever. Like, like my whole, my whole thing is picking a cube up and putting it on a, on a like switch and and the other guy's the one who has to bounce around and do nonsense. I cannot play a puzzle game like that on stream. I have my chat calling me a retard enough already. Yeah. Playing with puzzle games. No, thank (laughs) you. That actually the first time I ever streamed Portal, it was so that I would get the opposite experience. Like, all right, I'm gonna try this Portal game that I played 18 times. Let's see how I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should do: play Portal by myself for a while. <laughs> hours yeah, every my, day. My gut instinct is to fire one here and here. <laughs> <laughs> to one puzzle I don't know, and I'm like, and that's all for tonight. Bye, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I like Portal. It's a good time. I, yeah, I think- Twitch has really helped me rediscover enjoying games. Like, I just haven't been a big gamer for so long, and like, really, I, can, I guess I can give a bunch of credit to that to Grand Theft Auto Five. That is the most fun I've had playing a game. And as far as I can remember my Twitch, they help me. And sometimes in ways that I, I just find myself incredibly grateful for like, you know, like they they haven't been good at this lately, but they're like, all right, you know, sand two Oh three East wing. Is that key worth a lot? You know, and they can look it up for me and and tell me, or, you know, or I'll be like, I, I think I heard footsteps. Do you think you heard footsteps? And they're like, yeah, that was metal. There's a piece of metal under the door sill underneath you to your right. And it's like, thanks. You know, like we're working on it. It's a team. For every one person in there giving me good advice, I have a dozen with nothing but misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> Telling me the wrong things to do. I, and then did I hear someone? They'll no. All get, they'll all get on board. Where I'll be like, so am I supposed to kill the, the conductor of the train? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Bang! Boom. Wasted, wasted. <laughs> it's like oh, you, you should make up, damn it. Taylor, I guess I was we were streaming at the same time. You finished first, and you raided me. Cool. Yeah. And then I did this long conspiracy theory about how the St. Louis Blues cheated and didn't actually win the cup. Honestly, I uh, enjoy your final raid, friend. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I know he's kidding, but this is getting me irrationally upset. Yeah. Was it, or just a goof? I was I was more joking with the chat because like they'll call me a retard. They make fun of me like nobody's business. This was like a, a week ago or so. I was doing like a just chatting, watching like Intervention or Ninety Day Fiance, funny stuff. My Six Hundred Pound Life with Doctor Now, that Indian guy who does not play any shit. Doctor Now, you know, Chiz, if we can get Doctor Now on the podcast, I would fucking love it. He would <laughs> really whip my ass into shape. But like they'll they will give such bad information. 
so often to me that it will make it difficult to game sometimes. But basically, they were we were watching all that stuff, and fuck, I, I just lost my train of thought. We were, we were watching. Uh, it was. It started with the Stanley Cup thing. You rated me. Stanley Cup thing. That's what it was. And like they'll say, "Oh, you're a fat-headed retard. You're a moron. You suck at this game." And it's like, who cares? Whatever. And then one guy started posting like wrong stats <laughs> in the NHL playoffs and about the Blues. And I had to keep pausing and be like, "No, that that's not even the right stat line. You're that's fucking bullshit, dude. And you know it's cool." And then that unleashed a torrent where everybody's like, "We got him, boys. We got him." <laughs> wrong hockey stats in chat to trigger tail and it, and it did it embarrassingly it triggered me pretty good i'm like go back, to calling, go back to calling me a dumb fat retard please stop posting the hockey stat <laughs> oh mine was unrelated to that i asked for conspiracy theory ideas because we're going to do another one someday sometime i guess and uh, your helen keller one was so good we brainstormed and they were like dude do the st louis blues cheated their way to the cup and yeah it was just a joy and i did the whole yeah. thing with like trumpy and like people are saying that you know they were the worst by the All Star break, and then best at the, in the spring. Is that even possible? Same players. Lots of good people, lots of smart people saying that. Yeah. And I've never watched the sport. I don't. I don't. Need to <laughs> lots of good people. Lots of smart people saying the Blues never won. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was all. No it was filled with I heard and people are saying and yeah. All that's what you need. To do. Unsourced. Yeah. I heard and people are saying. Are two of the best phrases for conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, uh, <laughs> yeah stuff. That, that did get to me. I was not not your comment, but yeah, they they'd been your chat got you. <laughs> yeah, they, they got me with the blues stuff. Uh, I'm surprised anyway, you don't it's... like the uh, the Total War Warhammer stuff more with all the like lore and backstory that shit has. I, I love it. It's just that like I'm trying to play more games that I can talk to the chat more, and so like uh, GTA, Red Dead Redemption Two, games like that are very very much pointed towards that where you know I, I can look away from my horse for a second oh that's a good suggestion that's funny nice joke thanks for the sub whereas like i know the way that i play total war warhammer and i would i would be mute for minutes at a time just yeah trying you can talk between games but like i mean it's sometimes the the, the reason someone wins is their clicks per minute and and you have to be just so so focused and you're microing 12 15 different units and three or four of them have between three and five abilities yeah it's uh there's you know there's lots of different um control groups and it's a big fucking map and you're doing a lot of stuff it's it's mm -hmm. it's taxing so there, there's no time to there's no time to do anything most of the time i don't have enough time just to do what i'm supposed to be doing much less like talk to anybody or look Are anywhere else other than the screen more often than not what like are you still winning more often than not when you play online like one yeah one? oh yeah for sure yeah nice have yeah, you like I, hammered down a, a main faction you're playing I, with or? i play three or five like different ones I, i'm pretty good with everybody uh i probably i'm probably best with um lizard men yeah, or uh, dark elves um they're they're they're, pre they're both pretty easy to play uh but recently the um the green skins got a huge buff with the new dlc so the green skins are probably pretty the top meta tier right, right now, now. They... i don't know about the meta but they're top tier for sure they're top three i'd say green humans like the is that always up there. what are the green, the green men are like the orcs uh like orcs and goblins orcs or goblins yep one of the, the the new uh the new like um chieftain or like general i can't lord that they added the game is called uh grom the paunch and he's so fat that he can't ever he can't walk on foot <laughs> like like usually you have like mount options so you can like for like a thousand gold, you get like this 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 knight who has a magical sword. Let's just say, well, for two thousand, you can put him on a badass horse, and for three thousand, he'll ride a dragon. Mm -hmm. But with this new guy, it's like no, 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 no. The only option is to wheel this guy around <laughs> in a big wheelbarrow pulled by a bunch of hogs, <laughs> and and you see that little that little spire that sticks up next to him that looks like there's a flag on it. That's actually a, a tiny baby night goblin who feeds him snacks while he rides around killing people. Oh, and that's it, cool. How does when he you fight? Zoom, what? What's the, what is his fighting style? Probably, well, he he's on a chariot, so he's just ramming into people with like spikes on the wheels. And I think he's got a big battle axe in one hand. Mm. And the little critter is like feeding him these big <laughs> hunks of meat, like continuously. And he's just always eating as this little guy goes, <laughs> and like tosses him a big, like, uh, like chicken leg or something like that. It's great. It's hilarious. I, I need a new gaming PC. 
Taylor, do you, have you thought about getting a new gaming PC? I know yours is also not like cutting edge, right? Or maybe it is. It's not cutting edge. I was talking to a friend recently being like, hey, I, I should probably upgrade my 2060 to a 2080 or whatever it is, graphics card. Mm. And then he was like, no, for what you're playing, this is going to do just fine. And so we'll... I don't listen to that loser. What you need is one of these. What is that? Is that a... Oh, 1080 Ti? Yeah. He has a 2060, though. I don't know which is better. But 2060 oh. is probably parallel, at least. Oh. Yeah. 2060 versus 1080 Ti. I don't know. Right? Me neither. What's the new one coming out? So Someone the 1080 Ti is fine. the current new one. The 3080 will be the next new one that I'd really like to have. But... Like, I guess if you go by past trends, it would come out pretty soon, this spring or this summer, I think. But with Corona and COVID, you might expect yeah. it to be delayed. You might expect there to be manufacturing delays. You might, and, and now it's like, well, if you told me, Woody, you have to wait till Christmas, I'd say, all right, well, that's too long. I'm not waiting that long. If you mm -hmm. said, ah, oh, it might come in June or July, I would wait that long. And I don't know what the answer is going to be because it's not a normal year. This is still mm -hmm. much better. The 1080 Ti is better than 2060. Yeah. Okay. Quite a bit. I didn't expect that. Okay. Um, well, I get off and upgrade once that new one's available. That might they be the will, way to go. Yeah, it'll. I mean, it'll be a thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Yeah. Um, but it. But you know, games will run fucking good. I think there's a 2080 Super. I don't know what the deal is with that. I haven't, I haven't looked into it. I'm so happy with my current system, with this 2080 Ti, that like, I'm not in the market for anything. There is a 2080 Super. And like you, I only do research when I'm about to pull the trigger. And I'm not 100% mm -hmm. sure if Ti or Super is better. Someone out there, there knows and thinks we're dumb. Right? I think, Super's, I think Super's better, but probably <clears throat> not better enough to justify me spending another $1,200 or whatever it cost, and then having this t the 2080 Ti just sitting here, I'm going to sell it on eBay and deal with shipping. There's no way to check. Impossible. <laughs> it's so, uh, but but I yeah, I, I have to Google this one. <laughs> I'm really happy with my with my with my setup right now. This thing is it runs so smoothly to have no issues. Uh, every game just about as max. I'm playing 1440. Big curved monitor you have. Don't you? Uh, I gave that. I, so I gave that and my um, my last PC, which has a regular 1080, not a 1080 Ti, to her, because her gaming PC had broken down. So Did she's we using say a who hers? Huh? Who's her? Is it Kitty? Kitty. Did, oh yeah. yeah, I didn't keep up. So so she's got the uh, like the 34, 40 by 4, whatever it is that that big. Um, you got it right. 34, 40 by 1440p. Yeah, and she's got that that mm -hmm. monitor and uh, like two more monitors hooked up to um, a pretty nice 1080 system. I don't know. It was cutting edge when I bought it. Huh. <sighs> nice. Yeah. I need a new PC. I like it's terrible timing. Now the new CPUs just dropped. So I could get them knowing full well, I'll need a new GPU and I'll still be okay. And that might be where I land. Yeah. I could use a CPU up upgrade. I think Tark Tarkov is rather CPU dependent. And it's getting me. They made some CPU upgrades in the wipe that just happened this morning. They did. So it got a little more efficient, which we'll see how much that helps. I've only played two or three games. It, it, I was telling you, I think maybe before the show, I felt like I was getting a lot of frames. I need to turn on the frame uh, counter to see what I'm actually getting. But reserve felt super smooth and it looked great. Cool. Cool. Yeah. <sighs> so I'm trying to think. Do I have anything else on my agenda to talk? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, I have you have you finished off Clone Wars because you know they they finally did the last season for no. for Disney Plus. I uh, I watched it. I felt like they pissed around. It's like, all right, this is your final season. Hmm. Let's focus on Anakin, right? Like like, okay, maybe two Osaka episodes or whatever her name is. Four, four Osaka episodes. Jesus, no. Oh, we get, oh, there's Anakin. Oh, and he's gone. Okay, that was 30 seconds of Anakin and, what, 40, 45 minutes of Osaka. It was literally that. And I was just mm. like, ah, come on. It's like, it's like she's getting involved with these other characters you don't care about. And before I, you knew it, it was over. And then there was like a, a clone a clone troop episode that went on for like, you know, it won't just be one episode, one off. It'll be like three episode stories or four episode stories. 
that that like tell the same thing mm. and like and it seemed like there was an Osaka. I think I'm getting her right, her name right. There was like a there was like a four part Osaka thing, a four part clone uh, trooper thing, and then like two or three Anakin episodes, and that was it. I watch Clone Wars, but it's been so long, I feel like I've forgotten the details. It's got one of those catch you up kind of deals at the beginning of it, and I wanted to see how it looked. You know, it'd been so. I'm the same way. It'd been a really long time, but it was the. They finally did the final season of the damn thing, so I wanted to watch it. Before you knew it, fucking Darth Vader's there, and that's getting... It's like, whoa! Hmm. All right, I guess a lot a lot happened while we were with Osaka. And it's, all right, it's over. I, uh... Oh, when Disney bought Star Wars, I was one of the few people who was kind of excited about it. I was like, you know what? Hey, you're not making movies otherwise. Fire it up. Let's see what we got. Now, something about Star Wars... Everybody likes it and nobody loves it. And that's just how it keeps landing. I don't like it. You don't I don't like, like Star it? Trek anymore either. What's, like, like, what's current I, at on least Star I, Trek? I don't even know. Oh, oh, the Picard thing. I haven't watched Picard. Oh, and and the... Um, what? What's the fucking super lame one? That, 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 that's like two seasons in. Um, Discovery. Oh, Discovery's an abortion. Really? Discovery is disgusting. Um, and then, and then, yeah, Picard was just an abomination. It's just Ugh. so bad. It's you make so me want to see it. Yeah, I'm at least curious about it. You know what? Watch I, it. Like, I, like, 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 they're they just completely. First of all, it's convoluted, and their own storyline doesn't make sense when you really stop and hmm. and like, like, wait a minute. Why can't the Romulans evacuate their own planet? Why do they need anybody else's help? Oh, they don't have enough ships. Huh. Oh, but look, there's literally a thousand ships that show up for the battle. It's, it's just ridiculous. They bring back old characters and literally torture them to death in one scene, like mm. like, like, like a, a pretty beloved character from Voyager. Um, Seven of Nines in it. I hope uh, it's Neely. Does Neely get tortured to death? That's Neelix, and no, he does not. Fuck. And uh, <laughs> it, it, it's just bad. Patrick Stewart is too old. Like, like, I didn't think I would have a problem with him being too old because it was like, all right, he'll play the, he'll play the retired captain. It, and he somehow, he, needs, he looked old in the 90s, so he looks decrepit. Well, okay, in the, like, Twitter posts and such, I see, he looks a little older, but roughly like I remember him. Dude, he can't. So, so like, even if Patrick Stewart is still kind of with it, Captain Picard is long gone over mm. the hill. Okay. Captain Picard can't jog. Captain Picard is always huffing and puffing in any action scene. Captain Picard is is just a broken down version of his former self who does things that don't make any sense. Like like if you watch, you know, if you watched all of his shit before, you know, all that next generation stuff, you're like, wait a minute, Picard didn't like Data. Every t- like. They- Data was like a a, a, a co-worker. Jordy was Data's friend. They were like this. Yeah. They were buddies. Picard didn't give a shit about Data. And this, Picard's literally dreaming about Data, like having these weird like dreams about Data because Data died in the last movie. Picard and respected money. Data and he defended him when he needed his help. But he, like you said, they weren't... He, they were co-workers. There was a respect yeah. But in this, they make it out to be like this this like brotherly love story that they've got, or, mm. or like father son thing almost. That like he's he can't forget about data. He, he can't get him out of his mind, and it's it's bad. It's real bad. There's a couple of terrible actors in it. A lot of like one dimensional characters in it that are just hard to watch after five or six episodes of this shit. The production value is great. They're on location. And it looks good. the The ship battles look great. The ships themselves look cool. There are some cool actors in there, but the story makes no fucking sense. Not even a little bit. It's just bad. We'll see. I, I, I wish like I had watched it. I, I I like a thing in Star Trek that'll. I think I'm, I have a minority opinion. The Star Trek movies, fucking sign me up. You know, it's like we've got some space pirates here. Is anyone good at? 
base jumping and motocross because that's the skill set that'll solve this problem. But, all right, fine. Yeah, yeah. Add some fighter pilots in there, play some rock music, and we got ourselves a Star Trek movie. And I'm like, yeah, sabotage, rocket baby. Like, I'm all, <laughs> I, I'm jazzed. I have watched that scene where they play sabotage to bust all the mining ships up. A hundred times on YouTube. It's on YouTube. And I, I crank it up. Bah, that movie's bah, bah, bah. so bad. I, I, I like the first one. Uh, uh, I like the first Star Trek. I'll, rec- um, the, the- I'll admit, most people will agree with you. But I agree with me. And I like that movie. Fair man. enough. <laughs> yeah. Star Trek, the one where he's like, tell our kids I love them. You know, as he's... Yeah, that's the, the first one. Okay. See, yeah. that's what we're talking about. Yeah, you, you remember seen. one scene from that, that that one movie you watched a time or two? Yeah. <laughs> well, a, a time. Yeah. The first Star <laughs> Trek in particular was amazing. Now that also that had, one I liked. Uh, I had to admit I liked that one. Yeah. It, was, it was it was fresh and it had been so long since they'd done anything that it, it really won me over. And still, I could I, they, I would I would like it if I watched it today. They but did a, both of the sequels. They did a couple of things with the first one in particular. This is the reboot one. Um, one, it had the stuff I enjoy. Like, literally, they're like space mining, base jumping, shooting up, like, to, to solve problems right at the start of the movie. But the plot line was actually clever and complex. It involved time travel, and it enabled them to sort of reset the canon in a way that fit the canon so they could tell more stories. And The only thing that didn't make sense, mm. and I, I bet you never thought about this because I hadn't either. <laughs> So that Romulan guy goes back in time, right? Following Spock. Okay. Um, Spock comes out in the time of when Kirk's being born. Uh, back in time, like 80 years or whatever it was. A long, a long way. Then he destroys the ship that Kirk was being born on and kills Kirk's father. And Kirk escapes in an escape pod, right? <laughs> Baby Kirk. Okay. He makes it to Earth grows up and becomes a grown ass man so that he can very quickly get on board the enterprise and graduate from Starfleet, all that stuff. Where the fuck was the Romulan while Kirk was growing up, stealing cars, going to Starfleet, getting all of his degrees, doing the, that that fucking like, like competency test, learning to shoot a phaser, fucking all those green bitches. Where was the Romulan during all of those 25, 30 years? He was chilling out there in space right waiting time. on Spock. He was, I just imagine him sitting there like, whew, time does not fly when you're just sitting here for 20 years, does it? That, that's the biggest plot hole in that movie. But I, I admit, it. that movie is fun. I liked something new because it had been... I mean, did I mention base jumping? Because that was cool. <laughs> well... It, it was like a more like a halo jump. That was incredible. It was cool. Yeah, and then Mr. Was, Sulu yeah. pulls out some sort of flexi foldy sword out of his back. Like, holy shit. Where, why did they have that on board? I don't care because now he has a sword. I, some guys were badasses. They, they, <laughs> not so good with Jeeps and mailboxes. I shave with this. <laughs> Problem? <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a folding katana. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 Star Wars and Star Trek have just become abominations. I, when's the last time they came out with a new fucking property that was worth a fuck? Now, I mean, even now they're they're hmm. they're spending like a billion dollars on Avatar uh, sequels that are supposed to be coming out. I feel like I've heard about that for ages now. He's making them all. I think he's making them all like at the same time it, or something, Lord of the Rings style. I. I liked so, Avatar, but I just liked it. Like seven out of ten. It's it's weird that it became like one of the highest. I think that what happened is they were one of the first movies to really do 3D well, and people went to see it for that. And now it's been funded and misinterpreted as like some Star Trek, Star Wars, Marvel level like uh, platform. I mean, when did it come out? Two thousand nine or something. I, so, yeah, that before was, that, I think. Good. I think it appealed to a lot of demographics. I think. I think the same way Star Wars does. Like, I think kids liked it, nerds liked it, old people liked it, and and the, a lot of the characters were blue. So even black people liked it. It's like I can get on board with this. I understand a minority <laughs> being exploited for their natural resources. Let's go. Savage so, Americans liked it. Well, they don't pay. They they sneak in. <laughs> Jesus their Christ! I thought I was gonna get in trouble for. <laughs> anyway. Hey yo, ho, ho, hey yo, ho. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, 
I don't know if I give a shit about that. I, I mean, like, like I like it. that movie. Uh, like Tom Cruise, I can think of like three Tom Cruise movies that are better than uh, Avatar and deserve more sequels. Like Minority Report, remember that movie? Like that, that's in the future where he's like a time cop where they can. Yeah, that's pre- a good movie. I need to like, see that pre- again. Oh, they predict murders before they happen, mm-hmm. and then he like drops in through the ceiling on a rope, and he's like, "Stop before you kill that person tomorrow." And they're like, "What the fuck? How'd you know?" And they lock him up forever. I, or and like Edge of Tomorrow, that shit was badass too. Edge of Tomorrow's really ooh, bad. well, it, that might be an answer to Kyle's question of when's the last time they came out with a good new property. I, but I was, I meant like a franchise, like 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 like. It won't be that you say. I'm hoping it nah, won't be. Okay, I so I, I have in my head there's a now. sequel. Yeah, maybe you're right. What's a good new property? Something that got a sequel that doesn't suck, like Born. Born Very Born? little. I mean, that's old. Even, the Born trilogy. Born was okay, but that's early two thousands, right? Mission Impossible is the biggest franchise going right now. I bet. I hear you. That's the opposite oh, of new, isn't on. that from the sixties or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, well, it's ba- but but you know the Tom Cruise led Mission Impossibles are started in like oh one by that like that. But if you use that yardstick, I could be like, well, the Marvel thing's the best new property going right now, which is the opposite of a new property, right? Like it's. Yeah, yeah, an original property, I guess, is that, yeah, would be yeah. the way to put it. That something that somebody fucking screen wrote, not based on some other. John uh, Wick. John Wick ha- is has been so. Su- yeah, it's super popular. They're going to keep making them too. Yeah, it makes a ton of money every time. And it's they're badass. They're great. I've seen all three. I yeah, like them all. And it's new and it's, uh, it's not as big as some of the ones we talked about, but it's big and it's. I got one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's a, I, I like that franchise. They're, they're making the fourth one right now. I've only seen the first one. Shit. Keanu's aging a bit for me as an action star. Like, it, literally, the actor is... It, like, towards... It, when Seagal was still making action movies, but he shouldn't have been, he just didn't move the right way. Like, he had no athleticism, and they put him in athletic situations. Keanu's He's still not, making action movies. <laughs> Keanu's not that bad, but also he's not, you know, he's not a, who's the Chinese stunt man who's actually an actor? Uh, oh. He does his own stunts. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jackie Jim Chan. Lee. Jackie Chan. I, I was going for Jackie Chan. Yeah, like Jackie Chan, you saw him do his stuff and it's like, shit, that guy moves like an athlete. That guy moves like a kung fu martial artist, genius person. Uh, Keanu, I just see age in the way that he moves John is 55 and he looks tremendous for 55 yeah yeah his girl his girlfriend's like the same age as him too which which is commendable uh he uh i don't know he moves really good with the weapons um and he does a lot of like mixed martial arts in the in the uh in in the movies that's i don't know 75 percent legit yeah it's uh it's off i would say that's fair you know there, there's some nonsense but it's a movie I, I guess I don't know. I, I didn't notice the age on him. He still runs pretty well. That that's the telltale for me is like okay. when, is how they run. Like Tom Cruise, great runner. Like like he's known for being a great runner. He he looks good there when he runs. No way Sly Stallone looks okay running. There's no way. Not anymore. I, I'm no. looking at Keanu. He's a good 55, but I still see 55 in him. Like, does that make got, sense? Like, I don't know. Like it. I don't he's know. half sne- not, he's half sneaky American. Not that's, to make that's it, what's doing it. Not for to him. make it about me, but I feel like I'm a good 47. But you look closely, there's still 47 in there, right? Like, it, isn't uh, Keanu like part Asian or? That's Japanese? what I just said. I said he's half sneaky American. <laughs> oh, I didn't see. I haven't caught up with all your new terms. <laughs> yeah, I actually didn't understand. We're trying that to be more either. PC around here. <laughs> okay. He's partially sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> he looks white. Oh, the running thing. Look at his eyelids. I thought it was interesting about um. So what's Will Smith's son? They're sneaky. Jaden, maybe. Jaden. Yeah. yeah. So Will Smith is trying to make Jaden a movie star. This is ten, six years ago, something, right? And uh, one of the first things he does is he he sees his son run, and he's like, no. And he brings in a running coach. Like, I think the guy might be an Olympian or maybe he was on the Olympic team, whatever. And uh, he's like, girls will judge you 
after one second of running. You have got to learn to run like an action star. And they brought him in and they did running coaches and taught him how to run well. Will Smith runs well. I don't know if he still does, but he always has. And I, I thought it was interesting because you're right. That run, it's a it's a That tell. boy could be Usain Bolt. He is not going to be a star. <laughs> well, yeah, but this is before they knew that. And, and hmm. you know, he was Remember just trying to set him up for success. Earth? Yes. No. After Earth is this movie that Will Smith tricked a bunch of people into making about... <laughs> Really? It's in, yeah, it's in the future, and Jay and his son plays his son in the movie, and they have this like ridiculous accent that he tries to do for some reason. That's like a made up fucking accent. That's like a mishmash of all Earth accents. And the premise is that we left Earth like a thousand, ten thousand years ago or some shit, and we live on this other planet. But we, but on these other planets, we've been fighting this like race of like animalistic aliens that are like these four legged like werewolf alien monster things. And uh, we they, they they win the war against those things even, that we started, of course. And they've got one imprisoned on their ship that Will Smith and his fucking son are on for some reason. And they crash land on Earth, where where humans haven't been for like I said, either a thousand or ten thousand years. It doesn't make a fuck because they suggest that in a thousand or ten thousand, it doesn't make a fuck which because both are incredibly tiny numbers on the grand scale of time, evolution has happened. Will Smith has this line. He's like, this planet has evolved. Everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans for the last 10,000 years. And it's like, first of all, nothing evolves. Works. First of all, nothing really evolves that much in 10,000 years. All right. Like, like it might get some more stripes. The ears might get a little longer, but we're not creating any whole new races of animals. Second of all, why would anything evolve to kill humans if there are no humans on Earth anymore, which there aren't. This movie sounds retarded. Will Smith breaks his leg. They crash land. Will Smith's got a broken leg. He's fucked up. The leg's ble- the, he, he has to like tourniquet it, and the fear he's going to lose the leg if he doesn't get the if he doesn't get the blood supply back down to the bottom part of his leg. Like space magic to fix that. The space magic is in the tail of the plane. And the boys got to go, like, find the transponder in the tail of the plane, radio for backup to planet Xenon bullshit, and get some help to come down. So so his son is the star of the movie going on this mission through this Earth jungle, avoiding the alien, which has landed with them and escaped, of course. So Will and Smith all... isn't even in it that much. No! They tricked you! They, 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 they offered Will Smith, pulled it out from under you, and gave you little weirdo Jaden Smith who can't fucking act. An important detail we've left out is this movie came not so far after the footsteps of Independence Day. That's how they, you know, Independence Day happened. And Will Smith is like, you know, I'm thinking about making another space alien movie. Studios are like, how much money do you want? Take my money with the fry meme. And then he's like, yeah, yeah. So uh, one little, uh, one little hiccup. My son's actually the star. I mean, I'll be in it. You'll get Will Smith. You can market this Will Smith movie, but it's a platform to make my son a movie star. Someone paid for it. I, I want to say there, the, one of the one of the one of part of the premise is that Will Smith and like anybody who the aliens are blind and deaf, <laughs> but they can. They're Helen Keller, um, but they can. Uh, they sense Retarded. your fear. They, no, they can smell your fear. That's it. When uh when when a human is afraid, they like smell the pheromones and they and they attack. So Will Smith and everybody Will Smith is a super uber uber badass because he's one of the few who can cleanse himself completely of fear and like ninja warrior the aliens like like hundreds at a time with like a battle axe or something because he has no fucking fear, and okay. so. Th- and so the journey the son has to make is to master his own fear. Yeah, and very al- dumb. <laughs> Super <laughs> dumb. Super dumb. And you know what the worst thing is? I just looked it up. Jaden Smith is 5'7". R.I.P. acting. Wait, wait. wait. Tom Cruise. Tom yeah, Cruise I was going to go there. Actually, I think that um, like it's one of the cliches. When you meet your favorite actor, they're shorter. 5'7 and white. They're better looking and shorter than you think they are. Jaden Smith isn't white. Tom Cruise is, though. Yeah, that's true. Oh, he's successful. <laughs> Touche. Uh, <laughs> I, 
I want to watch how, that new Tom Cruise movie, the, the, the fucking Top Gun movie. Who's the Look, right? really talented actor? I don't love so much. Maybe Jamie something. He can sing. He can act. He can probably do more. What's he in? Or she, Jamie. It's a guy. He's a strong. He's like a black action star. I thought. Oh, Jamie Foxx. Say it again. Jamie Foxx. Fox? Yeah, I think it is Jamie Foxx. How, how tall you is hear he? Me, mama? How tall is he? Six yeah. feet. Oh. I don't know, but you can always uh, subtract some height off of those guys in Hollywood. They're Ooh. they're much smaller. It says he's five nine, which means he's probably Ooh. five eight, five seven. Right. I I don't know why. I thought I knew that, but yeah. So that's yeah, see, short black, big time star. Yeah, like five nine's not that bad. You throw some boots on. <clears throat> he's getting close to six. Is Jaden still growing? Those Fuck are some no. enormous boots. Well, he's twenty one, so I don't think so. You'd have but to he, be late. Pretty late to puberty to still be growing at 21. I had puberty at 19. I, I don't, yeah, I, I was definitely done growing. <laughs> yeah. No, I was done growing at probably 19. Yeah. 11 to 20 were some good years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I hit eight and a half feet. Uh, All right. Yeah. You want to wrap it up there? Yeah. Sure. Any uh, post outros? Anybody? Nope. Check out, check out all the sponsors. They're linked down below. Very good. Uh, PKA 493.